Uh, the League One leaders Rotherham have lost just once in their last 24 in all competitions and they are at QPR today who are fifth in the championship, Aaron Paul. Hello Mark, whilst this may not be the sexiest tie of the round, a close stand on the far side does tell it all. There certainly will be some intrigue to see if two sides who have fared well in their respective league campaigns can translate their good form to the FA Cup. For Mark Warburton and QPR though, this game is simply about getting minutes in legs for his depleted squad. They've been injury ravaged Rangers and Warburton has made five changes with Charlie Austin recalled to partner Andre Gray in attack. Rotherham, as you say, have lost just once in their last 24 games, but they don't fare well in the cup, having not progressed past the third round since 2002. There will uh, be an iron proceedings at Adams Park, but today is all about the cup, and Paul Warren has also made four changes to the lineup that were winners midweek with League One Player of the Month Dan Barlaza returning to the heart of the Millers midfield. Back at St James's Park, surely three matches matches in the Gallagher Premiership though that kick off at uh, three as well this afternoon. Big game at the Stoop, repeat of last year's final, Harlequins against Exeter, let's not mention last night, Chris Jones. <laughs> yeah, and we're just across the road from Twickenham where these two sides played out one of the great Premiership finals back in June. That was one in sensational style by Harlequins, run likely to get the same style of game today. It's very very wet at the stoop conditions you would think would favour Exeter but Quinns have shown they can really mix it up front with the best their scrum is a major weapon these days both sides desperate for the win to climb and consolidate their place in the top four that's a distant dream for your sail boys at the moment chappers <laughs> they were beaten at Bristol last night that's where Jonathan Overend is Yes, and uh, Bristol City trailing Fulham 1-0 in extra time. We've got six minutes remaining, but Max O'Leary in the Bristol City goal has made a couple of fabulous saves since they went behind to keep the home side in with a chance here. And they've brought Andreas Weiman off the bench, who's got 12 goals in the championship this season, their top scorer. There's still hope for Bristol City, but they trail Fulham 1-0. Just back to the Rugby Union, uh, Bristol's women beaten by Gloucester Hartbury this afternoon by 36 points to 14. Those other three o'clock games uh, in the Gallagher Premiership by the way Newcastle against Northampton uh, and Saracens against Gloucester FA Cup third round Saturday wherever the goal ending the Gallagher end so they're playing from right to left as we look black and white striped shirts black shorts against Cambridge United in their all amber as the ball runs through to their goalkeeper Dimitar Mitov they play with a back four of George Williams Jubrell Okadina Jack Iredale and Harrison Dunk, Paul Digby, Ben Warman will they be the two sitters and then the three of James Brophy, Adam May and Harvey Nibbs behind Joe Ironside. They're missing their joint leading scorer Sam Smith who was sent off against Portsmouth in midweek at the Abbey Stadium. Newcastle United giving a debut to Kieran Trippier. Martin Dubravka is in goal. Trippier, Kraft, Cher and Ritchie the defence. The midfield of Fraser, Shelby, Longstaff and Joel Linton Jacob Murphy and Alan Sam Maximan through the uh, the middle as uh, so Okadina comes in and gets an, a firm challenge on Joel Linton, who's been revitalised of late. He, he's been what the fans are looking at, to be honest with you. He's an example at the minute, Joel Linton. He's working so hard for the shirt. He's changed position slightly. I'll tell you what, he's looking very good. Newcastle United attacking the Leeds' end, for those of you who know St James's Park. Ritchie with a cross from the left-hand side. Stevenage are leading Walsall by a goal to nil in League Two. Paul Tisdale, who is uh, yet to win actually since he took charge at, uh, at Stevenage, but they've got an early goal at Broad Hallway. Newcastle United have come unstuck there in the FA Cup in the past, but that's a, a League Two encounter. We'll give you the goals as they go in. Remember, Fulham are still leading Bristol City in one of the early games, that the only game, in fact, that went to extra time. As uh, Brophy picks it up on that far side. And Trippier is there. I mean, a great deal of faith and no surprise for a, a professional such as Kieran Trippier, but to be thrown in straight away by Eddie Howe. He's come from Atletico Madrid, though, so he's going to be fit working under a uh, Diego Simeone team, but you can see the quality already by Trippier. You can see the passes, the weight of his pass from right back. He's delivering balls at the St. Maximus feet. Look, you can see how the quality has on the ball, that crossfield pass. Delightful crossfield ball as well. He picks out Fraser who's popped up on the, uh, the left-hand side. Fraser, though, is being held off by Nibs. He goes to his knees, he quickly back up to his feet. Tries to shoot for Joel Linton. That wouldn't have happened in the, uh, in the past. There'd have been maybe groans with uh, Joel Linton getting the ball to his feet, but his 
newfound work ethic. He's uh, certainly endeared himself to the Newcastle supporters of the late, but uh, three minutes played, nil-nil, and no other goals to tell you about so far. I think I must have put the curse on Joe Linton there with his first touch. <laughs> Talked him up inside the game, and then his first, his first second touch wasn't great. But you've got, I mean, Fraser just a minute popped up on this near side, the left, but he's actually playing on the right. Then you've got Sean Longstaff, Shelby, Joel Linton with Murphy on the left and Sam Maximan as the, uh, as the lone striker at the moment, as Okadina, the central defender for Cambridge United, hoists it high downfield. Trippier, first of all, got there with a knockdown header and then he's sent forward away on that right-hand side and he gets the ball as well, Trippier, right corner of the penalty area. Fraser now delivers the cross. On the cover was George Williams, only as far as Sam Maximan. It might break here for Longstaff. Goes down under the challenge in the penalty area. The referee, Michael Salisbury, had a long, hard look at it, but has instead said it's a corner kick to Newcastle, nil-nil. That could have gone either way, Daniel, for me. That could have gone either way. That looked, that looked really, really tight. But you can see the difference Trippi is making already. You really can. Just by taking the ball down there, a little header, bombs down, the fans are going to absolutely adore him. Well, he's taken the short corner, the ball is now played back, into the penalty area it goes, and the header from Cher about 12 yards out was a looping one over the crossbar and into the Lisey's end and out for a goal kick. I was speaking to, uh, to Mark Bonner in the week, and I remember Danny Cowley when he was the manager of Lincoln, and I heard him saying that in one of their FA Cup ties, uh, he broke it down into 15-minute segments. And in fact, that was the year that Lincoln actually went all the way and uh, I think it was the quarter-finals uh, that particular year, 2017, and eventually he said that they had that conversation in midweek because the two of them, of course, were up against each other in the league. And he said, and eventually they, they brought the, the, the game down. Instead of breaking it down to 15 minutes, it was 10 minutes and then 9 minutes as the, as the campaign wore on. As the ball is picked up by May here, he gets the shot away as well off his right foot and it's just over the crossbar and out for a, a goal kick. But Mark Bonner was saying that he doesn't want it to be too structured here today. He wants them to go out and enjoy it. And judging by that effort from Adam May... That... It's, it's important that they stay in the game. That, that's the biggest thing for Cambridge early doors, stay in the game. But they're going to cause problems with the long balls up to the, to the number nine iron side. It was very good in the air and he's pulling on the trip here and they get, they're running off into little pockets and getting knockdowns off him. It's going to be difficult to play against. Adam May, who knocked out Leeds United in 2017, the year that Sutton United reached the fifth round before succumbing to Arsenal. Newcastle are on the attack, near side the left, playing from right to left. Ritchie, one of three changes, gets the ball back, plays it back then to Murphy, left corner of the penalty area, onto his right foot, floats it into the penalty area, Longstaff arriving, it'll break forward to Joel Linton, heads it back to Longstaff, looked like a use of the arm there, and it's spotted by the referee, Salisbury and that'll be a free kick to uh, to Cambridge United. Good tempo to the game, though. Good tempo to the game. I'm really excited just by how they play Newcastle with the link-up play down each flank with Murphy and Ritchie, and on the other side with Fraser and Trippier. We welcome listeners to the BBC World Service, wherever you are in the world. Pleasure, as always, to have your company, and here we are in the northeast of England on a dry, thankfully a dry, bright afternoon, and it's the FA Cup third round and it's still Newcastle United nil, Cambridge United nil, 41 places the difference between Newcastle, 19th in the Premier League, against a Cambridge United side who are 16th in League One. But Mark Bonner saying they've played the role of underdogs throughout the whole of the campaign after their promotion from League Two last year. And since then, of course, they've lost Paul Mullen, their 34-goal striker that helped propel them into, uh, into League One with their promotion as there is a penalty now at Leicester. Hamish Marshall. And it's been converted by Yuri Tillemans. He scored in the FA Cup final. He scored here after seven minutes. It was a foul from a corner on the right-hand side, approved by VAR, and the holders Leicester lead Watford by a goal to nil. Only one of the last nine seasons have the holders gone out in, uh, in round three, and that was uh, Arsenal about four years ago. Only one of the early FA Cup third-round ties went to extra time. They've now reached full-time at Ashton Gate. Jonathan Overend. Yes, and this tie won in extra time by Fulham. Harry Wilson's goal late in the first half of that extra period. Bristol City earlier had dominated the 90 minutes. A whole series of saves from Gazaniga in the Fulham goal, but it's finished. Bristol City nil, Fulham 1. Idale bringing the ball out of uh, defence. Ahead of him now is Brophy. 
for Cambridge United, urged on by the 5,000 troubling support. But there was Trippier then to take it away off the uh, of the toes on that far side, as uh, and they'll quickly have the ball at the back with Shelby now taking over and he spreads it out to this near side. Our featured rugby union games, Harlequins, Exeter, Chris Jones. You were saying it's good tempo in your game, Denno. Great tempo in this one as well. Quins have scored once, they're trying to score a second. Luke Northmore putting them ahead, Smith converting. All Quins, dream start for the champions. They lead Exeter 7-0 after nine minutes. Stevenage have got a second goal now. Stevenage 2, Walsall 0 and it might be eighth time lucky for Paul Tisdale to get that first win since he took over. Murphy comes on the inside on this left-hand side, goes inside towards Sam Maximan, central position, gets the shot away left-footed, but he's dragged it wide and out for a goal kick, so we'll check in at Agbra. Kidderminster Harriers against Reading and John Murray. And under grey skies here in Worcestershire, it's Kidderminster nil, Reading nil. We've played nine minutes, most of the football's been played in between the two penalty areas. I'm watching it with Alan Hutton, former Scotland international. And how do you think the, the rank outsiders in the competition have fared so far? I thought Kidderminster have started the game really well. You wouldn't exactly think there's such a big gulf between both teams. They're playing out the ball out from the back, they're, they're trying to make things happen and started really brightly, if I'm honest. Against a, a Reading team that have made eight changes and have got four teenagers in the starting lineup. It is Kidderminster nil, Reading nil. Ace FA Cup commentaries over the Five Live network this weekend. The first, of course, was last night with John at, uh, at Swindon. There is commentary of, on that game that John's watching with Alan on Five Live Sports Extra of Kidderminster against Reading. Just your thoughts on the effort for Sam Maximan? John? Yeah, I thought it was really good. He, he jinked inside. Typical St. Maxima jinks inside, goes past one technically outstanding and just went by the by the post. But he's going to be the biggest handful today for Newcastle. That's without a shadow of a doubt. So we've heard from Kidderminster. What about Boreham Wood? They're entertaining Wimbledon. John Southall. Eight minutes gone in. Boreham Wood nil. AFC Wimbledon nil. But a bright star from Wimbledon. Ollie Palmer on the right of the area. Shot wide of the left hand post. Then Paul Asu with a header at the back post over the bar but a good start from the League One side Burnwood nil, AFC Wimbledon nil Accrington are leading MK Dons by a goal to nil in League One Shelby passing the ball back Kraft who's moved into the centre with uh, Eddie Howe jigging things around making those three changes building slowly from the back we'll go to Vale Park, John Akers it's nil nil between Vale and Brentford 62 places between these but you wouldn't know it at the moment eight changes for Brentford this afternoon Vale have done really well been well organised defensively and have looked all right going forward Vale nil Brentford nil so Maximan couldn't get the shot away on the edge of the area it's brought clear now with uh, Cambridge United and then Joel Linton herring after it the ball is played back to Okadina and then he hits it long and George Williams is forward from his right back roll and uh, it's then brought away by Murphy. There's been a goal now at Boreham Wood, John Southall. Boreham Wood of the National League leads AFC Wimbledon by one goal to nil. Brilliant finish from Tyrone Marsh, just on the edge of the penalty area, into the top right-hand corner. Boreham Wood one, AFC Wimbledon nil. Half an opportunity here for Newcastle. Sam Maximan on the left-hand side, played it to the edge of the area centrally for uh, for Joel Linton. Just couldn't get the shot away. Again, it is, his touch let him down. It was a brilliant run by St Maxima, brought the ball inside. And, and Joel Linton's touch has to be better. He should actually score from it or at least get an, an effort on target. It's his 100th appearance for Newcastle today. Fraser with a cross right-hand side. Richie on the stretch inside the penalty area. Couldn't get there, and it runs out for a goal kick. So it remains Newcastle United nil, Cambridge United nil, Gillingham nil, Ipswich one. Gillingham without a win in 12. That's in League One. So uh, Ipswich are ahead at Priestfield, and you're up to date as we will go to the Hawthorns. It's an FA Cup tie: West Bromwich Albion against Brighton and Hove Albion. Masfaruki. Goalless, but a bright start from West Brom. Ian Connor Townsend almost fed in Matty Phillips in the Brighton box from the left-hand side in the early stages. Neil Mope looking good as well at the other end. Remember, West Brom are without a win in their last three in the Championship. So it's been a difficult few weeks here at the Hawthorns, but they're holding their own. Still West Brom nil, Brighton nil. Still goalless here at, uh, at St James's Park. Dunk brings the ball under control, playing at left-back, forward it goes, and Trippier, uh, sorry, Kraft will just tidy it back up towards Dubravka and then plays it back to the uh, to the Swede, and he'll bring the ball out of defence. He slides it forward, but it goes out of play, and it's a Cambridge throw on that far side, the left. So we're approaching the first quarter, we are talking before about breaking the game down, 
how pleased do you think Mark Bonner will be? I think he'll be very pleased. I mean, it's obvious that New, New, Newcastle are going to have the, the dominance of the play, but Cambridge is staying in the game, they're looking dangerous on the counter. And if they keep on playing the balls up to Ironside, it was a real handful up there, and difficult to play against, they might get success from it. But the minute Newcastle are dominant, it, Kieran uh, Trippier has been the best player on the pitch by a mile, and you can see why he's been bought. Joe Ironside, who idolised Alan Shearer growing up, I did a little bit of detective work, and... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> and his dad was Ian. The Middlesbrough, former, Middlesbrough, former Middlesbrough goalkeeper. Scarborough goalkeeper, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Joe Ironside leading the line, joint leading sc goal scorer for uh, Cambridge this season with uh, 11 goals. And it's still nil-nil. We'll go to Wigan now in the FA Cup. Katie Smith. And it's spicy as you might expect here. Nil-nil still in this Lancashire derby. The best chance they're coming in literally the first minute. Jones in the Wigan goal coming out 25 yards to clear a ball. Went to Travis who tried a lofted shot into the open goal but it just glided wide. Ben Brereton and Diaz in the last couple of minutes just trying a curling effort just over the crossbar. Nil-nil here. Promising attack for Cambridge United. Williams got quite high up on this near side the right. Pulled it back. Adam May curled a ball in and in the end it went straight towards Dubravka but uh, they're, getting, they're getting moments on the ball, aren't they? That's when they have to be decisive. In them areas where they can break, when the two Newcastle full-backs have pushed high, they can get in behind them. Because I don't think they have the pace with the two centre-backs to deal, deal with that counter-attack for Cambridge. We'll go to Peterborough United at London Road. Jonathan Ledyard. It's 0-0 against Bristol Rovers. These two were League One rivals last season. It finished 0-0. It's been much more a game for Peterborough to dominate at the moment. They've had some really good chances. Sriki Dembele, their top scorer with five, looking prominent. But so far, Rovers holding their own without Joey Barton tested positive for COVID this morning. 0-0 Peterborough, Bristol Rovers. Well, here, Cambridge United have just been awarded a corner kick. It came after Newcastle lost the ball in the, uh, in the midfield. It was quite careless by Sean Longstaff. And now Cambridge have got a chance from a set piece. It was really sloppy by Longstaff. It was an easy pass, passed it back. And then obviously when Trippier had bombed forward, the space in behind Trippier could be exposed. And now they've got a corner and all the big men are up. So Paul Digby's there. There's about four amber shirts in front of the Gallagate end. It's a corner kick on that far side, the left. 5,000 expectant supporters. It's headed towards the far post and Williams arriving totally unmarked. In the end, a soft header at Dubravka. Unmarked. Eddie, I won't be happy with that at all. He was unmarked, he was free. He should have done better with it. He didn't really make Dubravnik make the uh, make the save. But he should have done a lot better. Trippier now tries to feed it towards Sam Maximan. Sam Maximan on the right-hand side. Can he deliver the ball? Instead, he'll throw, show his trickery. Pulls it back. Sean Longstaff to Trippier, right corner of the area. Goes short, back towards Sam Maximan. Trippier was on the overlap, but... He wasn't anticipating it, getting the ball back as quickly from Sam Maximan, and it runs straight out for a, a goal kick, and the move breaks down. Just seemed a lack of communication there, Deno, didn't it, between the pair of them? Obviously, used to, Trippier hasn't really trained, has trained at all, and it's a lack of communication between the pair of them there. Gillingham nil, Ipswich Town 2. Bearing in mind, for those who don't know, uh, Jonathan is, uh, is 41 later this month, aren't you? 42. 42? <laughs> I thought I was trying to do you a favour there. <laughs> I, I might look older than 42. I feel older than 42, Saturday, I'll be honest with you. But I remember commentating when he made his, his Leeds debut in 98. I commentated on his FA Cup debut at Rushton and Diamonds when he was uh, sent off late on at, uh, at Neen Park. And all I've ever known throughout my life is to call you Woody. That, that so I'm trying the best to call you Jonathan at every opportunity. You call me whatever you like, I'll respond to anything, Deno. <laughs> Believe me, I will. I think the Russian fans did call you whatever that day, didn't they? <sighs> no. Walking off that pitch as a young 19-year-old, I want the ground to swallow me up. Well, bearing in mind you ended up playing here and then Real Madrid, uh, as well as, of course, as your hometown club and the Stoke City as well. It was a, a very good career. And, of course, England, let's not forget, uh, as Jonathan Woodgate is uh, with us here at St James's Park. Murphy now into the... Penalty area for Newcastle United towards the far post and Sam Maximan on the stretch couldn't keep his header down inside the six-yard area at that far post. Heads it wide, nil-nil it remains. It was a great ball by Murphy, just a little bit too high for St Maxima. Oh, he just didn't time his jump well enough. But it's, a, it's an opportunity there. They're starting to get in down the flanks and, the, and Cambridge are going to find it tough now if Newcastle keep on switching the ball like they're doing. Let's get an update from Oakwell, another one of our FA Cup ties, Adam Cottier. 
Barnsley nil, Barrow nil, but uh, Barnsley have had the better of the play in the, an attacking sense. Callum Britton's looked bright for the home side. He had a shot, a curling shot from the corner of the box, turned away by Paul Farman in the Barrow goal. Barrow without their loan signing from Sunderland. They will Harris out with COVID, unable to make his debut, but making a good go of it so far. Nil nil. What a finish that was at Sunderland at, uh, at Wickham in League One. Wickham three, Sunderland three. Sunderland thought they'd nabbed it with a, a 93rd minute third goal to take them 3 2 up, but Wickham equalised in the 98th minute. Newcastle are attacking. Stopped at the back by Iredale. Jack Iredale comes back out towards the right hand side. This time it's Digby dropping back into his own penalty area and then midway back inside his own half was Joe Ironside to help help out for uh, Cambridge United and then May playing the ball back under pressure Okadina one of the central defenders digs it out actually does well to pick out Adam May lifts it forward and that ball will mean that Nibs has got a lot of work to uh, to chase and getting there first is uh, is Richie and all it goes back to Dubravka Ironside is bullying the two Newcastle centre-backs they've got to do better they've got to be stronger with him push higher at the pitch it's obvious that Ironside's not the quickest in the world. Push up high at the pitch and be aggressive with him. He seems to be winning all the aerial duels at the minute, which is not a good sign for Newcastle moving forward. 19 minutes played here at St James's Park. Newcastle United nil, Cambridge United nil. Of all of the FA Cup ties, the only one where we haven't been yet is Queen's Park Rangers, Rotherham, Aaron Paul. QPR nil, Rotherham nil. Little in the way of concrete chances for either side in. Although Rotherham have had the lion's share of the possession and they look bright with it. QPR nil, Rotherham nil. In the history of the FA Cup, no side has been eliminated more in the third round than QPR. Joint level with Plymouth. Plymouth, who are at Birmingham for a 5.30 kickoff later on. There'll be regular updates into our next commentary of that one from St Andrews when we bring you Hull City against Everton. Meanwhile, a goal at London Road, Jonathan Ledger. Scored by the home team, it's Peterborough 1, Bristol Rovers 0. The man that Darren Ferguson prepared to Johnston Clark Harris, his top striker. Sammy Smodic has given them the lead, beats the Bristol Rovers back line, offside chuck. They looked appealingly to the referee's assistant, not given, and Smodic ran through. 1-0 Peterborough lead Bristol Rovers. Overs. Sam Maximan right hand side still threatening the angle is tight tries to get the shot and it will be played away nice little turn there by May on the edge of his own penalty area he drops back inside his own box and clears long but there's no out ball because Ironside was on the other side of the uh, the pitch it's a great bit of quality May on the on the edge of his own box took it on the back foot he just needed an option further further ahead of him Ironside was on the other side the great bit of play technically Cambridge are very very good very good footballers. I know there was a late postponement. Ball played forward to Joel Linton. Joel Linton in the penalty area. Joel Linton still going. Can't reach Sam Maximan, who was arriving on that far side of the penalty area. He couldn't seem to get his feet sorted. In the end, it was with the outside of his right boot. And it was always, as a result, going away from goal. Yeah, I thought St Maximan was going to get in on the back post there. But Dunk, what an incredible job they did at, at left back to just... He just moved St Maxima out the way gently so he couldn't score a great bit of defending. But yeah. Joe Linton's got to do a lot better again. There was a late postponement in the National League, Dover against Notts County. Uh, and there's been a late postponement in League Two. Colchester United, Rochdale has been postponed. So I can't imagine that uh, Robbie Stockdale and the, uh, the travelling Rochdale supporters will be uh, very impressed with uh, with news of that. But BBC Radio 5 Live, Cheltenham lead Burton by a goal to nil in League One, and you're up to date with the goals as they go in. We're also live on the BBC World Service, and we're approaching the midway point of this first half, and it's still nil-nil here at St James's Park. And here is Shelby now taking over and playing the ball out to the Newcastle debutant. Kieran Trippier running forward, right-hand side, to far in advance of Fraser and it runs out for uh, for a goal kick Newcastle haven't had that one serious chance yet have they? not yet not yet um, they, they, they're working themselves down each side, each side of the pitch and that was the first time Trippi has gave it away I'm just really concerned about Newcastle on the counter-attack because of the way Cambridge is set up they can get caught on the counter-attack and, and they're leaving it they're leaving some um, gaps open to get exposed but like I say they haven't really created anything in this, in this game at the minute. Well, they've uh, kept only two clean sheets all season, two clean sheets in 20, and both of them were against Burnley. 
as San Maxima sent away with his pace, right side of the penalty area to the byline, turns back, angle is tight, San Maxima waits for the support, Fraser provides it behind him, and then he plays it back, Trippier with the first time cross into the penalty area, cleared, comes then back to, uh, to Ritchie, quite a central position, 30 yards out, out to the left it goes for Sean Longstaff, and then to Murphy, a little bit flat-footed, move breaks down and out for a goal kick back to Kidderminster John Murray midway through the first half it's still nil-nil between Kidderminster of the National League North and Reading of the Championship there's been just one big chance it felt a Reading a poor clearance by goalkeeper Simpson straight to uh, to camera who took it on but Simpson came out and made a very good save to make up for his error apart from that Alan Hutton not a mu not much in it no, there's not too much in it, but I think just at the moment, Reading are just starting to creep up with the possession. Obviously, we know that uh, Kidderminster haven't played a lot of football recently, so we'll see how that uh, tails on them. But uh, Kidderminster have just won their first corner of the match, but it's still nil-nil here at Agbra. And it's still nil-nil here at St James's Park. Newcastle United against Cambridge United. Digby dropping in between the two central defenders, gets it then back from Okudina. The uh, midfielder now goes in between Joel Linton and Sam Maximan, but Cher stepping out of defence, feeds it forward to Sam Maximan, who'll run at the heart of the Cambridge defence. He now finds Murphy with a place finish, excellent save by Mitov, comes back to Sam Maximan, and he can't take it in his stride, and it goes behind, and it will be a corner kick to Newcastle United. That's their best opportunity so far, and the keeper was equal to it. The keeper made a great save, but me, Murphy should do better. The, the last-ditch defending there... Um, from, from Ideal was top class, saved it on the low and it, I think it was Max I'm not going to pull the trigger, the trigger. Well the corner was taken very very quickly and it uh, it breaks down but uh, Mitov with that save away to his left hand side and uh, he'd, got, he'd gone for placement rather than power hadn't he Murphy? He needs to bend it in more I think, I think the keeper read what he was going to do and needs to hit with more more power and more swerve to get it into that far corner but the last this defending there was absolutely brilliant. Tramir Rovers lead Scunthorpe United uh, in League Two by a goal to nil at Prenton Park. Tramir, who've won their last five, going very, very well under uh, Mickey Mellon. Here is Shelby in this FA Cup third round tie. Every outfield player now is in the Cambridge half. Newcastle are attacking from right to left. Shelby couldn't control that ball. It comes back towards Cher. Cher might go it alone. In the end, he was just crowded out by the sheer weight of Amber Shirts. And then it's Ironside holding the ball up and now releasing Nibs. And Nibs up against Kraft, one-on-one. -on -one. Kraft holds up Nibs, he still gets the shot away, out it goes off the rebound for a throw. I can't understand what the Newcastle defenders... Let's go back to Leicester, there's been another goal. Hamish Marshall. Leicester, the holders lead Watford by two goals to nil, and it's been coming. Lovely finish from James Madison, clipping it over the advancing goalkeeper. Nicely set through by Adam Ola Lookman. Leicester 2, Watford nil. Gillingham nil, Ipswich 3, a latest score in League One. Before this throw is taken, we'll quickly go to Vale Park, John Akers. Where Brentford of the Premier League have scored. Port Vale nil, Brentford 1, and it's Force, Marcus Force, right foot, smashing it past Aidan Stone, the keeper. And it's the Premier League side in lead 1 0. Cheers, John. Williams then to take a throw on this near side for Cambridge United. About six yards up from the corner flag, looping long into the penalty area. Outstretched leg by Joel Linton gets the ball away and out for another throw. Another goal at Barnsley, Adam Cottier. Barnsley 1, Barrow 0. Mads Anderson, the Danish captain, with the goal. Callum Styles with a free kick from the left channel, swung it over left footed, and it was a super looping header from Anderson. And Barnsley lead this 1 1 0. Brophy with a cross from the left-hand side, Nibs hangs at the far post, comes back to Williams, lifts it back in, it's high, it's dropping into the penalty area and it goes to the edge of the box before Fraser can get the ball away towards San Maxima. The amber shirts were forward there for Cambridge United and I tell you what, they're not daunted by this challenge, Jonathan. They're doing really well. It was just previous there, about ten seconds before. He just turned again, I inside just turned and there was four Newcastle defenders around him. Go and connect with him, go and make it difficult for him. It was too easy for Einstein to turn and play the ball forward. 
another goal at Leicester Hamish yeah Mark said this wasn't much of a game Watford back in it 2-1 to Leicester the goal has come from João Piero he was uh, set through into the penalty area nice finish pass Danny Ward Leicester 2 Watford 1 Trippier to Fraser back to Trippier again right hand side playing from right to left attacking the Leeds' end and then running back to help out and just a, an outstretched uh, left leg was from Ben Warman and it goes out for a, a Newcastle throw so you've heard all the goals as they've been going in up and down the uh, the country in the FA Cup third round. It's Five Live and the World Service here at St James's Park. And we're approaching the half-hour mark and the League One side are more than holding their own at the moment. But Newcastle United far side, the right, have got this corner kick that Fraser is going to take. Right-footed, it's an outswinger. Joel Linton climbs, but his header is straight at goalkeeper Mitoff. Yeah, it was a really good leap there by, by Joel Linton. The ball came in. Great header up about... Must have been about 10 inches above his defender and parried into the uh, into the goalkeeper. Decent serve. So the results from the earlier games in the FA Cup third round. What a job Chris Wilder is doing at Middlesbrough. Another another win for him. Mansfield Town two, Middlesbrough three. It was uh, another late goal though for uh, for Middlesbrough. A little bit like their late goal at Blackpool recently. They were two 0 up actually at one stage at Field Mill. After extra time, Bristol City nil, Fulham one. A shock at Turf Moor. Burnley one, Huddersfield two, Coventry one, Derby nil, Hartlepool two, Blackpool one, Millwall one, Crystal Palace two. Penalty now. Jonathan Ledyard at Peterborough for Bristol Rovers against Peterborough to be taken by. Paul Coots, who used to play for Darren Ferguson at Peterborough United. He's the captain for Bristol Rovers, right-footed, and he scored! And the League Two side have levelled. Peterborough have had all sorts of chances since taking the lead, but they've been pegged back. Peterborough United won, Bristol Rovers won. Peterborough United one win in nine. The ball is in the hands of Dimitar Mitov, 24-year-old Bulgarian goalkeeper, all in yellow, clears away downfield and it runs out of play and it'll be a, a Cambridge throw 15 minutes to go to half time here on 5 Live and it is still nil-nil it's vital they get into half time nil-nil absolutely vital because they're doing fantastically well to tell you what they're really well drilled Cambridge they look really organised in the shape out of possession and you can see what the managers try to do with the shape of the team they're being hard to beat but they look really really dangerous on the counter attack he's a very impressive uh, Young man Mark Bonner, only 36 years of age, one of the youngest managers in the Football League, Liam Manning, MK Dons, Michael Duffett, Cheltenham, similar ages, but no playing background. And when I asked him who is his influence, his inspiration, Sir Bobby Robson, because of how personable Sir Bobby was. And uh, certainly if you're asking in terms of a, of a role model, then uh, you won't go too far wrong if you base yourself on Sir Bobby. Lucky enough to, to play under Sir Bobby Robson, an incredible man-manager, tactician. So that's his role model, it's not a bad one. No, it's not, and he's uh, alongside Gary Waddock, the former Queen's Park Rangers player, of course, as his assistant, to offer a little bit of experience there to his, uh, his manager as the ball is played back to Dubravka. 14 minutes to go to the break. Floodlights are on here at St James's Park. Shares bring the ball out of defence. Eddie Howe and Jason Tyndall watching on from their technical area down below. We're not too far behind them here as we sit low down at St James's Park and the ball from Cher is spread out to Sean Longstaff, doesn't control the ball first time and knocks it forward to, uh, to Fraser. Back then to Trippier, goes past Trippier actually and now Trippier is on the ball as Kraft plays it forward. Fraser inside, Sam Maximan dropping deep, 30 yards out from goal though. Black and white striped shirts attacking that Lees' end as Richie on the left-hand side now to Shelby takes over. And for all their possession, they've only had one really good opportunity so far that Mitoff saved from Murphy. Out it goes to the right. Fraser with a cross. In it goes to Murphy making the run. Couldn't get enough on it, and it's swept to safety. Ockendina again, great defending, just got in front of Murphy. Murphy needs a bit more desire there to get on the end of it, but Ockendina done it ever so well. That was one of the first balls Fraser's really put into the box into a dangerous area. Here is Cher. Richie from the left-hand side, back into the centre circle, he finds Kraft. Once more, every outfield player is in the Cambridge half. Five live in the World Service, down the line it goes. Sam Maximan now is on the ball, right-hand side, he chips over the cross. Iredell brings it, very composed, off his chest, and volleys the ball away left-footed. Only as far as Trippier, midway through the Cambridge half. 
left footed, passes the ball out to the right touch line. Fraser runs in field, now taken over by Shelby. Shelby, a little bit of a slip, but passes the ball and to his right. Trippier, now to Sam Maxima. Trippier wants it back inside and then looking for Sean Longstaff. And uh, it goes ahead of Sean Longstaff and to the feet of goalkeeper Dimitar Mitov. So, Boreham Wood, Wimbledon, John Southall. And Boreham Wood of the National League still lead by that one goal to nil, scored by Tyrone Marsh. Brilliant finish from him. They've had another, could have made it to Josh Reese on the volley, 16 yards out over the crossbar. Filthy afternoon, absolutely lashing it down here. But Boreham Wood lead AFC Wimbledon by goal to nil. It's lovely and dry here. Barnsley 1, Barrow 0, Boreham Wood, as we've just heard. Kidderminster Reading is still 0 0. Leicester City 2, Watford 1. Uh, Peterborough 1, Bristol Rovers 1, Port Vale 0, Brentford 1, Queen's Park Rangers, Rotherham, West Brom and Brighton and Wigan and Blackburn are all goalless. And don't forget we've got commentary at half past five of Hull City against Everton after a truncated sports report. But Cambridge United, 12 minutes to go at a half time, still 0-0 here with Newcastle. It's just the, the shape of the Cambridge team. Like I said earlier, really well-drilled team. And sometimes Newcastle have no options, have no options to pass the ball because all the gaps are, are narrow, they're compact and they're difficult to play against. They're doing, they're doing a fantastic job. He said that they have flirted with 4-4-2 on occasions this season, but by and large it's this 4-2-3-1 formation or occasionally they, they put two more ahead of the, the sitting midfielder. But it's the same formation that they played against Portsmouth. They've only made that one change, an enforced change, because of Sam Smith's suspension after his sending off at the Abbey Stadium. And uh, so far, it is, uh, it's working to good effect for Mark Bonner's team. 11 minutes to go to half-time. Okadina inside. Digby plays it forward, held up by Ironside. Plays it back then to Digby on the halfway line. Left-footed ball cut out at the edge of the centre circle by Sean Longstaff. Now feeds it to Murphy. Murphy, Longstaff coming on the overlap. And he finds him, left corner of the penalty area. Longstaff, though, he was stretching. And as a result, his left-footed ball rather than a cross, goes straight at the goalkeeper. This is the problem Cambridge are going to have on the transition of the game. When they, when they make a sloppy pass, Newcastle is straight out, but the, Sean Longstaff has to show more quality in that area of the pitch. Let's go back to Kidderminster, John Murray. Well, this tie is still very much alive, Ian. Ten minutes to go to half-time. Kidderminster of National League North, nil. Reading of the Championship, nil. And things have just warmed up for Kidderminster in the last five minutes or so. Sterling hit a shot from 30 yards that was superbly saved by the Reading goalkeeper Raphael with his wrong hand leaping to his left, Alan Hudson. Yeah, it was a great save. You just think, what's he, what's he going to try here? But it's a spectacular shot, we know he likes to do that. The keeper in the goal does ever so well, Raphael, just to tip it over the bar. Things are really starting to heat up here. But Kidderminster nil, Reading nil as we approach half-time. Well, there's no VAR, but... It would have been interesting. Oh, no, there is VAR. There is VAR because, of course, it's at a Premier League ground. So VAR is having a check. Deno, it has to be a pen. There's a potential penalty check here for Cambridge United. And Peter Banks, it's flicked on by Ironside. Now, this is had this been at the Abbey Stadium, there would be no VAR. But then Nibs looks like he's brought down by, by Ritchie. Ooh, the Ooh. referee's... The referee, Peter Banks, has had a look at it, the VAR, and he said that... Michael Salisbury got the decision right. No clear and obvious error. What, what do you think? Not for me. I thought Richie tug, tugged at him a little bit. I really did. Just there. Look, he gets in front of him. There's a tug on his shoulder. For me, that's a penalty. But what about Ironside causing the centre half problems again? Well, you picked it up early on. It was funny as well because I was uh, I was listening to John last night as Ironside is offside. It's clearly offside. The ball go through to the Bravka. Uh, and this is where you get the inconsistency about certain grounds having VAR in the FA Cup. We do have VAR, they did have a look at it, and Cambridge United might have reason there to have a little bit of a grievance. But again, as you'd said, Ironside with a flick on. He's caught. Uh, as it was, they had a look at it and they disregarded it. Uh, let's get an update from the Rugby Union, Chris Jones. Extra have scored, Ian, their first, first proper spell of sustained pressure. Lovely offload off the floor from Joe Simmons. England star Henry Slade gliding over at the corner. Simmons kicked the goal, we're all square nearing half-time. Harlequin 7, extra 7. They can be very pleased with the way that they've acquitted themselves, though, Cambridge United here. 
they've been absolutely brilliant, to be honest with you. And that was a massive opportunity for me. And I'm, I'm still sure it was a, a penalty, to be honest with you. I really am. I, I thought he got in behind Richie. I thought he was sloppy and didn't get round enough on the cover. Listen, Richie's not a, an out and out fullback. He's more of a winger, but he needs to do better. Sam Maxima, left corner with a shot, right footed. And Mitov on his knees and his near post turns it behind for a corner kick. Another good save from Mitov. He's difficult to stop, Sam Maxima, when he comes on them. Off the, off the line, dribbled in nicely. Premier League defenders have problems when he does that, but it was a great save by Mitoff down to his right hand side. Corner kick then to Newcastle United. Uh, highlights of the FA Cup matches, by the way, BBC One tonight at 10.30. Fraser takes the corner short, rolls it to Joel Linton, then places the ball back. Here is Richie with a shot, Mitoff again with a save, but the rebound is snaffled in, but the flag goes up. The flag goes up, VAR will have the check. And it is ruled out for the time being. Nil-nil, it still stands. But we'll have to see whether VAR intervenes here. The work that free kick so well there. That is, that is off the training ground. That is an Eddie Howe speciality, the way they've worked that. Cher looks like... It, there's a resigned look on Cher's face, almost as if he knows that he's in an offside position. He needs to get up with the, the Cambridge back four. Credit to the Cambridge back four, how well they moved the line-up. Again, from the training ground, Cambridge moved that line-up. It's what you do on the training pitch. And uh, play is about to get underway, which means that the VAR check is over and offside it was against Cher, and it still remains nil-nil here in this FA Cup tie. As May burst forward and Dubravka quickly off his goal line and he had to be too because Adam May was uh, making long strides into the penalty area been a good cup tie been a great, really good cup tie came from another flick on by Ironside but Dubravnik was really quick honestly I said earlier on that Ironside is bullying the centre-halves yeah, he's yeah. absolutely giving them a torrid time here is uh, Sean Longstaff to Shelby still goalless Shelby cries to shoot he might have lied yet no instead he feeds it to Fraser Fraser with the cut back Good save again from Mitov from Murphy. Sam Maximan then holds on to the ball, left-hand side, delivers the cross, and the header at the far post is wide. <laughs> what a save. The Cambridge players are congratulating the goalkeeper there on an outstanding save. And this, that's been Newcastle's really best chance. But Mitov, again, what a top save. According to Google Translate, Mitov in Bulgarian means myth. Myth. And at the minute, believe this, he's defying Newcastle. That's three very good saves. <laughs> he has been fantastic, but you can see the Cambridge players there. You see it with the Italian defenders when the when the keeper makes a, a heroic save. They're all around him. It's brilliant to see. So uh, two of them have been from uh, from Murphy, but that's the uh, the third very good save that uh, Mitoff has made in this first half to keep out the Premier League side. Still nil nil. And we've got four and a bit minutes to go to half-time. We'll go to Vale Park, Port Vale, Brentford, John Akers. Port Vale of League 2, nil, Brentford 1. Force with the goal for Brentford, who've been the better team, but Vale have just had an effort at goal. David Worrell, who's done really well down the right, through the game, cut on his left foot, a curler just wide of the goalkeeper, Lursel's right-hand post. He's making his debut, the Dane. It's Port Vale nil, Brentford 1. Free kick is taken and played out towards that left-hand side. It's for Brophy on the attack for uh, for Cambridge. Warman now with the uh, the cross, headed out by Kraft. And then it comes to Harrison Dunk, the uh, longest-serving player for Cambridge United, and the ball is hoisted out towards Brophy, but a cushion header back by Trippier. Bowled out by Dubravka to Fraser, right-hand side midway through the Newcastle half. Shelby ten yards away from the centre circle. Uh, Red card now at Oakwell, Adam Cotier. Yeah, still 1-0 to Barnsley, but Barrow of League Two are down to 10 men. Tom Beadling shown a straight red card for a tackle on one of the Barnsley midfield players who's still down injured. Beadling makes his way to the tunnel and Barrow down to 10. Still Barnsley 1, Barrow 0. BBC Radio 5 Live, still 0-0 between Newcastle and Cambridge. And it'll be a Cambridge throw deep inside their, uh, their own half. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. I'm not boasting. It's the fact of the... I know you're looking at me funny there, Jonathan, but it's the fact of the day. If you listen to Drive, Tony Livesey, 6.20 every Friday, you'll know that fact of the day, and uh, that is the song that is played every time that Cambridge United win at the Abbey Stadium, and it's because Jack Morgan, who was the PA announcer in 1955, played a song from the Billy Cotton dance band. He played it at random, and it's been played ever since. And 
I who do knows? Lo- I do love coconuts myself. Well, the way it's going, the Cambridge fans might be singing it because they're still <laughs> in the cup tie. <laughs> they're doing really well, to be honest, I know. They're doing really well, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And uh, two and a bit minutes to go to half-time and they will have been very, very content to have this scoreline as they travelled up the A1 in their hordes, 5,000 of them, as the uh, ball is picked up by Mitov, the Bulgarian goalkeeper. And he just waits as Newcastle retreats. I mean, they do have still the experience of Wes Houlihan maybe to bring off in the uh, the closing stages, his Premier League experience, a couple of teenage, three teenagers on the bench for Cambridge United. Neither side has actually named their full complement on the bench, eight subs for Newcastle and seven for Cambridge United. But for Newcastle United, we think of cup upsets, Hereford springs to mind and Stevenage more recently, but both of those were away from home, but at home, Scunthorpe and Lindsay United beat Newcastle here in 1958. And I was reminded by David Pleat this morning that Bedford Town, when they were in the non-league, beat Newcastle in 1964, although Newcastle then were a second division side. But Cambridge United, for those daring to dream, will still have hope. It could happen here. It could happen here, especially after the first half performance from, from Cambridge. Like I said earlier, the compact, the narrow and the difficult to break down. And Newcastle at, at times are trying to force the play. The centre-backs at the minute look a bit too weak to play against Ironside. And it wouldn't surprise me if they went and scored from this. Well, they've got a free kick far side the left. In it comes now. Nibs with a twisting header and it's caught by Dubravka as he just jumps in the air underneath his own crossbar and then he rolls the ball out ever so gently underarm to uh, to share. And at a walking pace, it's stroked back to Shelby and then Shelby hits it long. Fraser's trying to get around Harrison Dunk, but very experienced, heads it towards Brophy. On the stretch was Warman, couldn't control the ball. There is Shelby back with uh, Newcastle United, still nil-nil. Northampton Town nil, Crawley one is the latest score. Northampton second in the table at, uh, at six fields, but uh, behind at home to Crawley in League Two. Shelby with a curling low ball out to Fraser, right-hand side, first-time cross, Longstaff arriving, comes in towards Murphy, hits it first time, right-footed, and it cracks the crossbar, and in fact, the goalkeeper's got a touch on that as well. What another excellent save from Mitov. Mitov tipped it onto the bar, it was a great strike by Murphy there, got really over the ball, but again, what a save by the Bulgarian. Well, all of a sudden, Mitov is becoming the hero. We joked earlier about it being war man, but it could be meet off here for Cambridge United. That's four very good saves. That was a blistering effort by Murphy. We're into stoppage time, just the 60 seconds to be played. Fraser curls the ball in, headed out by Nibs. Trippier in the centre circle, plays it back out towards the right. Sellout crowd here at St James's Park. Murphy towards Sean Longstaff, forced out a little bit wider than he would have liked, too far wide, out it goes for a throw. Goal now at Kidderman's to John Murray. The championship side, Reading are in front, and George Puskas has scored almost on the stroke of half-time, just a long ball to the edge of the penalty area. Camera got an initial touch and it bounced nicely into the path of Puskas, the Romanian international, volleying it with force into the back of the Kidderminster net, Alan Hutton. Yeah, it was a great finish. Puskas is in the right area, that's where you want your, your number nine between the sticks, and it's, it's an easy finish for someone with his talent. Not been much in the game, but Reading have got their noses in front. Kidderminster nil, Reading one. Well, Barnsley have uh, had their noses in front, and another goal at Oakwell. Adam Cottier. Yeah, they're 2-0 up now, Barnsley. Ian Jordan-Williams with the second goal. A ball into the penalty area from the left-hand side, deflected into the path of Williams. His first shot was blocked. His second, he just lifted it past the goalkeeper into the net. And Barnsley in cruise control now, 2-0 up against Barrow. Half-time here at St James's Park. It's Newcastle United nil, Cambridge United nil. And Dimitar Mitov has made four very good saves for the League One side. 
Yeah, and Jacob Murphy will have nightmares about Meatoff tonight because three of those four have been from him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think Meatoff's been he's been outstanding with them three saves. I'd say late on in the uh, in this in the first half as well because Cambridge at times have done really well with the shape, but they're causing Newcastle problems. And if Newcastle don't get the grips with the centre forward, they're going to have problems. They need to push higher up the pitch and be harder to play against against the iron side. This FA Cup tie is still very much alive. Newcastle United nil, Cambridge United nil. Have they not given a penalty for that, Jonathan? Um, chat was I'm with you all day long. That is a penalty. I can't believe they haven't given it. I mean, Ironside's causing them problems all day long, the two centre halves. They're not brave enough and they're not, they're not quick enough to deal with the pace even in behind. But for me, that is a penalty and Newcastle have got away with it. I mean, that, they will say, won't they, oh, well, there wasn't enough to overturn the on-field decision, but... It looked like A wrestled him and B tripped him. Yeah, for me it's clear yeah. as day. Richie doesn't get round quick enough and he, and he brings him down. I mean, he couldn't stay on his feet any longer. Uh, nearly as bad a decision as persisted with that fact of the day, hey, Ian. Uh, let's go to uh, I've Vale. I've got to do it. It's Sorry? part of the contract. I've got to do it. <laughs> it isn't part of a contract. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's it. you've, you've signed a contract to do fact of the day, have you? Yes, I have. You have a word my agent if you don't believe me. Uh, uh, right. Right, then let's swiftly move on back for the second half at St James's Park. Let's go to Vale Park next, where the Premier League side are ahead. John Akers. They are. It's been a, a good game. Vale nil, Brentford one. The goal coming from Marcus Fors. Really nice finish on his right foot. Just too much power for Aidan Stone in the Vale goal. Vale have had their moments. David Worrell's gone the closest for them, but they just hit the, hit the crossbar, I should say, Brentford. Just before half time, Visser, after that brilliant goal in the Premier League just a week ago, go, uh, shoveled it against the bar and it, back it came to Adja whose right foot shot was saved brilliantly by Stone in the Vale goal. Vale still very much in it in League 2, it's Vale nil, Brentford 1. Uh, Salford City have taken the lead at Newport County on the stroke of half time, Newport have put through their uh, own net there, Finn Azaz with the own goal, they've won three of their last five of Gary Bowyer's side as they try to get out of the bottom half of League 2 and they lead this afternoon in South Wales miserable afternoon at Boreham Wood weather wise, great atmosphere great cup tie though John Southall yeah brilliant, just like the last round actually when they won by four goals to nil, the atmosphere's been great, the rain has now abated and Boreham Wood lead Wimbledon by a goal to nil, still playing in this first half, actually there is the half time whistle, Boreham Wood lead by a goal to nil Tyrone Marsh with it and what a finish this was on 10 minutes stepped inside a challenge on the edge of the penalty area and planted the ball into the right corner thrashed it in eighth of the season he will not score in it more important one for the club all season long could have been two Josh Reese on the volley 16 yards over the bar then just before half time Scott Bowden at the near post side foot volley just guided it into the side netting Wimbledon have had a couple of moments Luke McCormack running at the defence dragged his shot wide and Rodoni with a deflected cross from the left hand side almost snuck into the top right hand corner but Ashby Hammond the goalkeeper diving to his left hand side palmed it away but as it stands at the moment they have never been in the fourth round Boreham Wood of the FA Cup they're fourth in the National League there are 34 places between these two sides and at half time it's Boreham Wood 1 Wimbledon 0 see all the goals tonight 10.30 on BBC One National League North side behind at half time John Murray Yes, Kidderminster nil, Reading 1 is the score here at Agbra. I must say, for much of it, there did not look to be 79 places between them until the 45 minutes ticked up and Tetek put a ball to the edge of the area for Reading. Camera, a little touch from him into the path of George Puskas, who smashed it in on the volley as he ran into it, uh, as he ran onto it. Kidderminster could have been in front, spectacular 30-yard effort from Amari Sterling that the goalkeeper, Raphael, he looked beaten, but he just got a touch to it to push it over the top. But I suppose Alan Hutton in cup ties, those are the things that make the difference. Yeah, as I thought Raphael made a, an excellent save. We know Sterling likes to try the spectacular, and he was really unlucky. The ball was swerving. Great save over the bar, but they've held their own. Even though they're 1-0 down, they've actually done quite well within the first 45 minutes. Yeah, they have. So, uh, Reading just in front at half-time here. Kidderminster nil, Reading 1, and a couple in front have just taken the top off a red thermos flask. They must be regulars. <laughs> Why? Why would they? Because be... they know that. Because they know they need to bring a flask. All oh, right. Okay. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, let's go to the King Power Stadium next. As I was saying, Hamish Marshall, really looking forward to this one. Yeah, that's right. Again, yeah. didn't need your big sell, chappers, <laughs> did it? The Leicester marketing department think there's a great job lined up for you here. This game's spoken for itself. Leicester lead Watford 2-1. A VAR approved early penalty converted by Yuri Telemans and then an eighth goal of the season from James Madison. A really lovely dink finish. 2-0 and it looked as if that could be enough for the holders but Watford scored within two minutes. Ashley Fletcher setting through João Pedro. He shot past Danny Ward. A cracking first 45 minutes in front of a really decent crowd as well. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Masaruki at the Hawthorns next. Uh, no, no. It's been pretty even between West Brom and Brighton. West Brom have had their fair share of the ball, but they haven't been able to find that incisive final pass or that final bit of quality to beat the Brighton defence. The best chance for them probably fell to captain Jake Livermore after some neat build-up work from Matty Phillips, who has worked very hard going forward in this first 45, but his shot was cleared. Brighton have played, as we've seen them do so effectively all season, away from home with a long ball over the top to try and pick out Danny Welbeck and Neil Mope. They produced the two shots on target in the first half. And a bit of injury concern as well for Graham Potter. Enoch and Wepu has had to be substituted after a few minutes of treatment. Alexis McAllister is on, his, on in his place for Brighton. Goalless between West Brom and Brighton. All square there, all square as well in the game between Peterborough and Bristol Rovers. Jonathan Ledyard. Yes, one all of Peterborough, the home team, threatening to overrun their League One rivals from last season in keeping with the form book when they were promoted and Rovers relegated. Sammy Smodic beat the visitors offside trap to score after 20 minutes and frankly, that was the least they deserved. They were smarter, they were faster, but 10 minutes later, Rovers shocked their hosts when Anthony Evans collided with the United keeper James Belshaw, earned them a penalty converted by captain Paul Coots, former Peterborough player, twice signed by Darren Ferguson in his career. United rather stunned by that response. It needs some Fergie words of inspiration, I think, at half-time. One all. Uh, Barrow are going to have to go some if they're going to prevent Barnsley being in the fourth round. Adam Cottier. Yeah, Barnsley two, Barrow nil, Poya Ashbaggy, the uh, Barnsley head coach, could well be in line for his first victory here today. Just one win in 22 before this for Barnsley, but they're winning thanks to Mads Anderson's fine header from Callum Stiles' free kick. And then uh, Jordan, Jordan Williams' close-range finish right at the end of the first half. In between the two goals, Tom Beedling was sent off for Barrow for a high challenge on Ramal Palmer. Barrow have struggled to create things. They've now got eight hours of football away from home without scoring. They've not scored since their first round tie at uh, Banbury in the uh, in November. Anthony Glennon, the closest to, to scoring for them, but they find themselves 2-0 down at half-time here. Goalless in the Lancashire derby, Katie Smith. Yes, it's Wigan nil, Blackburn nil here. Blackburn know the championship side with most of the sustained pressure throughout the half. If it wasn't for Jamie Jones in goal with a couple of decent saves for Wigan, they may well be ahead. One of those close range from Buckley just before half-time as well. Brereton Diaz with a pelter. Jones pushed away. It makes up, though, for his botch clearance in the first minute of the game. It almost led to a Blackburn goal. Travis just lofting the ball wide of the open goal. Brereton Diaz did have the ball in the back of the net a couple of minutes before time, but um, that was ruled out offside. So remember, Blackburn looking to progress through from the third round for the first time since 2017. Not if Wigan have anything to say about it here. They're defending calmly, nil-nil at half-time. Nil-nil, the scoreline for Aaron Paul as well. Yeah, QPR nil, Rotherham nil. This one took a bit of time to get going, but turned into a half-decent contest as the half wore on mark. The home side have had the best of the chances, two of them created by Lee Wallace, excellent down the left flank, he played in for George Thomas who couldn't quite get much purchase on his tap in with the goal gaping, then Andre Graham the volley forced a brilliant save from Josh Vickers in the Rotherham goal just before half time and a drilled Charlie Austin effort produced another fine save out of Vickers, loads of possession but limited end product from the visitors, no shots on target for Paul Warren's side with rain driving down in the capital at the break it is QPR nil. Rotherham nil. Uh, in the early games in the FA Cup, Mansfield 2, Middlesbrough 3, Bristol City nil, Fulham 1. That had to go into extra time, did that game before Harry Wilson sealed it. Huddersfield knocked Premier League Burnley out. They came from a goal down to win 2-1 at Turf Moor. Finished Coventry 1, Derby nil. Hartlepool have knocked out Championship side Blackpool. They beat them 2-1. And in the South London Derby, Crystal Palace came from behind to beat Millwall 2-1 
at the Den. Earlier in League One, finished Wickham three, Sunderland three. So Sunderland remain in second behind Rotherham on goal difference. Uh, in the three o'clock games in League One, Accrington won, MK Dons nil. Colby Bishop got his 10th of the season to put the home side ahead. Mo Isa equalising for MK Dons and also Accrington down to 10 men in that game as well. Cheltenham, who haven't won in their last seven in all competitions, lead Burton by a goal to nil at half time. It's goalless between Doncaster and Fleetwood. Great first half for Kieran McKenna's Ipswich. They lead 3 0 at Gillingham. James Norwood got the first four in five for him now. Then Wes Burns, then Macaulay Bond with his 12th of the season. And it's comfortable for them uh, at Gillingham. And Lincoln lead Oxford by a goal to nil thanks to Anthony Scully's 12th of the season. In League Two, it's uh, Carlisle 1, Bradford 0. Jordan Gibson with the goal six for him this season. And they're on a good run of form at Carlisle. They've won uh, three of their last four in League Two. Colchester against Rochdale was postponed about half an hour from kickoff because of a waterlogged pitch. Newport nil, Salford won. Uh, Newport in seventh, they won three of their last four, but they're behind at half time. Second place, Northampton behind as well. Northampton nil, Crawley won. Stevenage lead Walsall by two goals nil as they try to get their first win under Paul Tisdale. And Tranmere, who've won their last five in the division and are going well, lead Scunthorpe by two goals to nil at half time. Into the National League, Aldershot nil, Maidenhead one, Barnet nil, Altrincham nil. Bromley 2, Solihull Moors 0. Dover Notts County also called off not long before kickoff uh, this afternoon. Uh, Notts County, if their Twitter account is anything to go by, not best pleased at that decision. FC Halifax 1, Eastleigh 0. Torquay 2, Dagenham and Redbridge 1. And Weymouth 0, Southend 1. Uh, in Scotland, no Scottish Premiership games at the moment. They're on the winter break. The Championship leaders are both are behind at half time. They trail air by a goal to nil. Hamilton nil, Partick one. Inverness nil, Wraith one. Great first half for bottom of the table. Morton, who lead Dunfermline by three goals to nil. That would drop Dunfermline to the bottom of the table. And it's Queen of the South nil, Kilmarnock one. Into League One, Adrianians three, East Fife nil. Clyde nil, the leaders Cove Rangers nil. Falkirk three, Dumbarton nil. And Montrose nil, Allawa one. And in League Two, uh, the leaders Kelty Hearts won earlier. They beat Sterling by three goals to nil. Uh, it's half time in the other three games in League Two. Albion Rovers won, Stenhouse Muir won, Cowden Beath won, Anand two, and Forfar won. Stranra won into the Gallagher Premiership. Three games are taking place at three o'clock. Uh, we are at the repeat of last year's Premiership final. Chris Jones. Major flashpoint right at the end of the first half. Exeter down to 14 men. Prop Alec Hepburn showing a red card for a dangerous clear on Joe Marley. It was shades of Umaga Mialami on O'Driscoll back in 2005. Lion Sam Simmons perhaps lucky not to get a card himself. But Hepburn is off. So Quinn's have the extra man for the whole of this second half. Terrible conditions. It's nothing like the game last June, which was a cracker. Luke Northmore crossing early for Harlequin. Henry Slade with a neat try to get extra going. The Chiefs really grew into the game in the second quarter of the match, but they'll be down to 14 for the second half. Seven points all at halftime here. And the other scores, Mark, Newcastle 3, Northampton 20. That's a halftime. Also halftime at Saracens. Saracens 14, Gloucester 12. And one score from the United Rugby Championship. Edinburgh taking Cardiff to the cleaners. Edinburgh 27, Cardiff 3 just started the second half. Done my, done my job for me there. Had all those scores. Thanks, Chris. Not a problem. Uh, all right, in the Premier 15s women, Bristol 14, Gloucester Hartbury 36, uh, and Sale have been thrashed at home by Exeter Sale 7, Exeter 43. And your final bit of sports news, uh, England need to bat the final day if they're going to draw the fourth test against Australia. Australia declared their second innings 265 for six, another century for Usman Khawaja. Uh, so England closed the day 30 without loss. It means they need another 358 if they're to win or bat the day uh, to draw. Exactly four o'clock, Jill McKenzie has the news. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Novak Djokovic's lawyers say he should be allowed to stay in Australia because he had COVID last month, which means he would be exempt from the country's vaccine requirements. The world number one is at a detention hotel in Melbourne. A court hearing will take place on Monday. Campaigners are cautiously welcoming government plans to make property developers pay to replace unsafe cladding on low-rise blocks of flats. Leaseholders in buildings between 11 and 18.5 metres high will no longer be expected to pay.
Airlines and tour operators say inquiries and bookings have increased significantly since the travel restrictions were eased for the UK. As of yesterday, fully vaccinated adults and under-18s don't need to take a pre-departure test and those arriving from 4am tomorrow will be able to take a lateral flow test rather than a PCR. And NASA says the James Webb Space Telescope is now fully deployed. Scientists have opened a second mirrored wing which will pick up the light from the very first stars. This is Five Live Sport with Mark Chapman. Players coming back out in all our three o'clock games. Uh, the Reading team just coming back out at Agbra where they lead Kidderminster of the National League North by a goal to nil. If the story does come from there, we can join John Murray and Alan Hutton for commentary. We're going to return to St James's Park though, where Cambridge have held Newcastle uh, for the first half. Newcastle nil, Cambridge nil. The Newcastle Twitter account Ian did tweet out the. BMX for sale sign that was held up pre-match. So they put it on their social media as well. What was interesting was 42 quid and they spelt quid K-W-I-D. You don't even you don't even save any letters by spelling it that way. It's just a shame there's not a too good, too bad for you tonight for match of the day because that would have, uh, I'm sure, would have featured on it. I think the, bar, the, th- th- the bar's higher than that, Ian, but anyhow, come on. <laughs> Chappers, I agree with you, I've spelled the quid. That's brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. Anyhow, all yours. Thank you. Two teams are out. Neither side has made a change. There is a purple haze over St James's Park for the start of this second period. Newcastle United nil, Cambridge United nil. A reminder of the two teams, De Bravka in goal, Trippier on his debut, Kraft and Cher, the two central defenders as we're underway. Richie at left back, a midfield of Fraser, Shelby, Longstaff and Joel Linton. Uh, and Murphy and Sam Maximan through the middle for Newcastle. Black and white striped shirts, black shorts. And in this second half are attacking from left to right. So they're attacking the Gallagate end against a Cambridge United side in their all amber with Mitov in goal, Williams, Okadina, Iredale and Dunker back four, Warman and Digby the two holding midfielders with Nibs, May, Brophy and Ironside. And Newcastle United quickly on the attack. And it's Jack Iredale, who they signed on a free from Carlisle in 2020, who has to turn the ball behind for a corner as Newcastle try and put pressure on the League One side in the very early stages of this second period. So, Newcastle United with a corner on this near side, which will be taken... A trip here and curled in and Joel Linton arriving and he got on the end of it too, uh, falling forwards, right footed, but it was straight at meet off the goalkeeper. The quality Kieran Trippier puts into the box is absolutely fantastic. And to be fair, he's marked well there, Joel Linton. The defender done enough, I think it was Irondale done enough just to just make it difficult for, for Joel Linton to get the effort on the goal. The first of uh, what they're hoping is, is many between now and the end of the transfer window. Kieran Trippier arriving from Atletico Madrid for a deal until 2024 for £12.5 million plus uh, add-ons. But Newcastle United are very much proactive in the, uh, in the transfer market to try and bolster their ranks for some key games coming up, particularly down at the bottom. Watford visit here next weekend, followed by an away trip to Leeds United and then Everton early February as they try and dig themselves out of the relegation mire. But uh, the FA Cup in recent seasons hasn't really been a, a happy hunting ground in the 14 years of the Mike Ashley reign, only passed the fourth round once and that was when they reached the quarter-finals in 2020. And they're up against a, a stubborn and well-organised Cambridge United side. They're on the attack now. That hasn't been dealt with. It comes to Joel Linton. It's bobbling around inside the penalty area before Okadina manages to get the ball away. And Newcastle United now with, uh, with Joel Linton. There's been a, an early goal at the Hawthorns, Mas Faruqi. And West Brom have the lead. Callum Robinson has put them ahead in the early stage of the second half. He was set up wonderfully, though, by Colin Grant, who did all the hard work in the build-up down the right-hand side. West Brom won, Brighton nil. Fraser with a cross from the right, cleared away by Digby. He's been quite effective, hasn't he, uh, Paul Digby? Just sitting there and at times dropping back to help out the two central defenders. He's done really well. Sometimes he's just stepping in between the middle of them. He's the captain of the team. He gets it, he gives it, and he's effective, and now he plays. 
He's uh, signed uh, in Stevenage in 2020. Uh, he was an England youth international back in uh, in the day. He's 26 years of age. He's six foot five, so he's quite an imposing figure in the uh, in the midfield. As this is Trippier wearing the number 15 on his Newcastle United debut. With the ball drilled out to Fraser, cut out by Harrison Dunk, and now Warman comes forward for Cambridge United, playing from right to left. He's got Brophy out to this near side, the left, and Trippier quickly snaps into the challenge, and out it goes for a, a throw. Five live in the World Service on FA Cup third round day, and more commentaries to come. Our next is Hull City Everton at 5.30 with Conor McNamara and Rob Green. Mind you, let's not forget, there is the possibility for extra time. Extra time and penalties. Can you imagine this place if it goes to extra time and penalties? 56,000 fans. I think last time we had a penalty shoot out of your hand, missed. Champions League qualifier. Oh, against Red Star yeah. Belgrade. Alan Cheever missed as well, so it didn't... <laughs> it was one of them ones, oh. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, they don't have a particularly good record the when doors. it comes to, uh, to penalty shootouts, Newcastle United. It's the last thing that Eddie Howe would, uh, would want. But Cambridge United are proving a, a tough nut to crack so far in this FA Cup tie. Dubravka inside his penalty area, controls the ball and then out to Cher, who can run forward. Had a regular run in the side under Eddie Howe. He started eight of the last nine now, the Swiss international, and he hits the ball forward. Murphy looks like he's offside. Murphy now enters the penalty area. Murphy still going, and Murphy finds the bottom of the net. But now the flag is raised. And I've got to say to the naked eye, and VAR will check this, but when that ball is hit by Cher, Murphy looks in an offside position. But VAR will have to have that check. He does look an offside position. When I saw it at first, I thought exactly the same as you, Denno. He did look like he'd gone a bit too early. It was a great ball by Shea. He does have that in his locker, Shea, to hit them passes, and I think that's the reason why he's playing, to hit them long passes. He hits them from left to right or right to left. It's fantastic, technically, for a centre-back to do that, but I think he just creeped offside at that minute. And it is ruled out through offside, and we remain at nil-nil. It's the second goal that Newcastle United have had ruled out through VAR. Sam Maximan sent away, Williams slides into the challenge. Goal, meanwhile, at Wigan, Katie Smith. And it's gone to the championship side, Blackburn Rovers. It's Wigan nil, Blackburn won. A couple of minutes into the second half, and a substitute, Rita Kadra, down the left-hand side, a surging run, shot in at the near post under the keeper. They lead by a goal to nil. Six minutes into the second half, still nil-nil at St James's Park, Trippier. Short diagonal ball, Murphy controls it, out towards Fraser, keeps the ball in play, level with the penalty area, attacking the Gallagate end. Trippier's forward ball, Sean Longstaff caught in possession. And Jason Tin Tyndall and Eddie Howe hoping that Newcastle can try and pin Cambridge back deep inside their own half as they watch inside that technical area. As the ball then is played back to Emil Kraft on the halfway line. Shelby to Cher. Having to be patient, Newcastle supporters, no sign of frustration from the crowd just as yet, as Cher going it alone, and almost bundling his way in towards the penalty area before Williams stops him. Cher slides into the challenge and it goes out of play, out on that far side. I think the message from Eddie Howe at half-time beat, can we switch the ball from left to right or right to left as quick as possible and really get at their full-backs and make it a 2v1 with the overlapping full-back? I think that's what they need to do more, get Shelby on the ball, hit them diags and make it difficult, drain the legs out of the Cambridge players. You know what it's like when you don't have the ball, it drains you. Well, the thing is as well is that, you know, they had two games over the festive period affected by COVID. The games against Wickham and Doncaster were postponed. They've had players coming back from COVID, so there could be a fatigue issue with a, a number of them. Mark Bonner wasn't affected, he said his family were, but he wasn't. At times it can be such a, a random virus as uh, Cambridge United still sticking in this cup tie. Fraser makes a run into the penalty area and off the goal line quickly was Dimitar Mitov to gather that ball in safely. But they're a, a close-knit bunch, that is for sure, and they're still holding Newcastle nil-nil. We'll go back to Kidderminster and John Murray. Still Kidderminster nil, Reading one, so the championship side in front thanks to that George Puskas goal just before half-time, 
it's over the piece, it has been close between the two of them, it continues to be, but Puskas's goal is making the difference, 1-0 Reading lead. Here is Sam Maxima, cutting inside now, edge of the area, links up with Fraser, the return ball might come back towards Fraser, Harrison Dunk slides into the challenge, catches Fraser, and it's going to be a direct free kick for Newcastle, and this is just outside the D, and it's fractionally, fractionally right of centre. I tell you what, this is Kieran Trippier territory. It is. And do you know when you watch Kieran Trippier live, you don't realise the quality he has on the football. Because I've been watching him today, I haven't seen him live before, but the quality, has his weight of his pass, his timing of his pass, the positions he takes up, the, 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 um, the leadership he has. He's telling players where to go. He's, he's only been in the building one day, yeah. but you can see the effect he's going to have on this team. Well, I remember, as I'm sure many do, his free kick that he scored for England in that World Cup semi-final in Moscow. This is about 25 yards out from goal. Trippier has just adjusted the ball. He'll be fancying this one with his right foot. Ritchie's the other likely taker. Matt Ritchie, who is on 98 senior goals in his, uh, his career. They're the, uh, the two. Cambridge have everybody back. We've been playing now for 55 minutes. It's nil-nil, it's a free kick, it's direct, it's 25 yards out, it's Trippier into the wall, headed away by Dunk, and eventually Cambridge get the ball away through Brophy. Only as far as Shea, he's going to go from distance midway through the Cambridge half, and that was a right-footed effort that was high and wide, and out it goes for a goal kick, as we'll get an update from Boreham Wood, John Southall. And Boreham Wood still lead Wimbledon by one goal to nil. Tyro Marsh, the goal scorer, has come close again, just inside the penalty area. His shot pushed round the left-hand post by Zanef in the Wimbledon goal. So what are we? 53 minutes played, just over 35 minutes away, Boreham Wood. Their first ever place in the fourth round of the FA Cup. They lead by goal to nil. Yeah, there are, I think, three ties, and we're one of them, where we could have extra time. Nil-nil here at St James's Park. Peterborough won, Bristol Rovers won, and Queen's Park Rangers nil, Rotherham nil. But Warman playing it through, might reach May. Ball kept back, shot goes goal, blocked off, turned, Ironside! Joe Ironside for Cambridge United! who stunned Newcastle here at St James's Park. 11 minutes into the second half, it was a scruffy goal, but try telling that to the 5,000 travelling Cambridge United fans. They dared to dream, and now they have a lead here against the Premier League side. Ironside's been an absolute handful all game. We said it in the first half, we're saying it now. He swivelled in the box and he buried it in the bottom corner. Do you know what? Cambridge have done absolutely fantastically well in this second in this second half to really be narrow and be defensive and then they've got him on the break. But a great finish by Ironside. We saw it coming first half then, we knew what it was going to be like. There's an upset on the cards. Dubravka is down and Dubravka is getting treatment. VAR are checking the goal for a possible offside. This could yet be have a cruel twist as far as Cambridge are concerned. As the ball was played in, Dubravka came out to try and smother it. It was headed away by Cher, and on the turn, six yards out, was Joe Ironside for what would be his 12th goal of the season, but they're looking for an offside. It's just before the pass goes into the box where it could be. It's really, really tight. If Newcastle get away with this, they've had an absolute result. Well, that is tight. Now, in the first, Ironside looks like it's offside, but they're not focusing on Ironside. It looks like they're, they're focusing on, is it Warman, who's gone through the midfield? That is very, very tight. That's tighter than cramp, as they say. And I've had that a few times in a few games. Well, Cambridge United supporters now might well be having to come to terms with VAR because it could yet ruin their hopes and their dreams as the cameras had quickly panned to the celebrations high up in the gods. But the amount of time that they're focusing on this when the ball is played forward... Are they looking at a potential handball oh, off Ironside Or does here? it come off Shelby? Oh, if it comes off Shelby, it comes off Shelby. Can't well, be offside. 
if it comes off Shelby, they're now focusing on whether that outstretched right foot from John Joe Shelby means that it wouldn't then be offside. Dubravka, by the way, is back on his feet. You can hear nothing from the Newcastle fans. Ironside waits. Cambridge United, Mark Bonner and everybody linked to the club because this is such a huge moment. Dubravka might not be able to continue. Mark Gillespie could be coming on here. But this has been a lengthy, lengthy wait as they're checking for the VAR. And the goal stands. The goal stands and Cambridge United lead Newcastle by a goal to nil. And it is Joe Ironside. Dubravka is hobbling, but he doesn't look like he's going to be able to continue. Almiron and Willock are quickly called from off the bench. Eddie Howe wants attacking reinforcements because Cambridge United of League One. 41 places the difference between them and the Premier League strugglers lead by a goal to nil. It doesn't surprise me that they've scored. It really doesn't because they've had chances in this game. They've had chances. The two centre-backs at Newcastle are not strong enough in this game to deal with Ironside. He showed it in the first half and he's shown it again in the second half. Almiron has come on for Sean Longstaff. Murphy is coming off for Joe Willock. Meanwhile, there's been a goal and we will go to Leicester Hamish Marshall two things are happening here Leicester have one foot in round three they lead 3-1 Harvey Barnes made it 3-1 he got on the end of a Lookman pass Mike Dean disallowed it but VAR has reversed his decision but almost immediately the lights have gone out here so we're in almost darkness in the stadium mobile phones illuminating the ground players suspended we'll see when it restarts Leicester lead 3-1 Wes Houlihan is going to be coming on for Cambridge United Newcastle trail by a goal to nil. Sam Maximan now on that left-hand side. Looked like he was tripped. No. Goal kick. Sam Maximan thought he was fouled. He right was decision. shaking your head. Right I thought it was good defending. He's really impressed me. Uh, the right-back, Williams. I think he's been absolutely brilliant, especially playing against a Premier League player and Alan St Maxima, who gives Premier League defenders a nightmare. And Williams, the right-back, has played really, really well up to now. Wes Houlihan is coming on and going off is Ben Warman. Houlihan, by the way, in his four seasons in the Premier League, never actually won at St James's Park. Lost twice by a goal to nil lost 2-1 and in his last visit here he lost by six goals to two with Norwich but Ben Warman the 20 year old midfielder is coming off and now Wes Houlihan at 39 years of age the former Newcastle player Newcastle Jets that is he had five appearances in the A-League uh, he comes on with his experience and his craft and his creativity with diminutive dark hair ponytail just to try and pick up the ball but Cambridge United find themselves leading by a goal to nil and what a scoreline and not many people would have expected this especially when Eddie Howe went so strong with his team selection Almiron picks it up BBC Radio 5 Live and the World Service Sam Maxima back to Almiron cross turn behind corner kick to Cambridge it's going to be backs against the wall for Cambridge for the, for the whole of the second half I see uh, bringing Houlihan up brings that little bit of experience, the know-how in the game, and that's what Cambridge will need at the minute. It's going to be difficult for him. In comes the cross, headed up in the air by Digby, headed back by Fraser. He was lost out in the aerial advantage there to Nibs, who holds onto the ball and now tries to bring it away and does well under pressure to knock it back to Harrison Dunk, who clears it long to Ironside. He's worked tirelessly up front, has uh, Joe Ironside. Houlihan tries to chest it back. Richie, not only would this be a shock to the system, bearing in mind Eddie House had the priorities to win the next game, but it could damage already the brittle confidence for Newcastle. As Sam Maximan picks it up, Sam Maximan flashes a shot wide. Out it goes for a goal kick, 63 minutes played. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live, Jonathan Woodgate. Eddie Howe will want momentum. And that's why I picked this really strong team. And at the minute, they're not giving it. They're moving the ball slowly from side to side. They need to move it quicker. They need to hit uh, St Maxima on the left-hand side. They need to play quicker across the pitch and then get balls into the box. 63 minutes played. Lincoln 2, Oxford nil is the latest score in League One. 
And Newport nil, Salford 2 is the latest score in League 2. But we're concentrating on the FA Cup. And shocks always tend to happen. And we've got one on the cards here at St James's Park. Williams sent away on that far side for Cambridge United. Houlihan on the ball, left-footed, crosses, ironside, tries to get on the end of it, he's headed off target, well wide for a goal kick, will go to Vale Park, John Akers. Port Vale of League 2, nil, Brentford 1, fours in the first half for Brentford with the goal, but second half, Vale have given it a right go here, they've had most of the possession, lots of goal mouth, mouth action, corners, but no real efforts on goal as yet, but they're having a right go, Port Vale nil, Brentford 1. Another goal on the cup at Wigan, Katie Smith. Yeah, it's an Equaliser for Wigan, Wigan won, Blackburn won, the goal coming for Max Power and a shot worthy of his name, Ian, 30 yards out and he powered it past Pears, he could do nothing, Blackburn have had all the possession, the goal coming from nowhere, this has really woken up the DW Stadium, it's 1-1 here. Goals flying into the FA Cup, another one at Peterborough, Jonathan Ledyard. A goal for Peterborough United, they lead and what a goal, watch it tonight, Barley Mumba, substitute, cut just signed from Norwich on loan this week. Real quality, running just straight through the Bristol Rovers defence and finishing with a wonderful right-footed shot. Pete Smith added two, Bristol Rovers won. Houlihan and Digby trying to do some defensive work. Houlihan very cleverly holding on to the ball, played away by Dunk, stopped by Kraft. Shelby, Newcastle, trailing by a goal to nil. Cher was caught a little bit late there by Nibs and the referee is going to have to take action against the Cambridge player. He just caught him in the last second, didn't he? Nothing intentional, I don't think he deserves a card. Cher needs to get back up on his feet. There is uh, a card out, so there's going to be a booking here. In the meantime, we'll go to Leicester, Hamish Marshall. Well, the lights are, have been reset here. It was about six minutes we were stopped for the players stayed on the pitch while they are keeping themselves warm. So we've lost about six minutes, we've got about half an hour to go. Leicester 3, Watford 1. Lights could be going out on Newcastle's FA Cup campaign as it stands, as they trail by a goal to nil, 24 minutes remaining. Do you know when you look at Ironside, he looks like one of them real old-school, like 1987 centre-forwards, difficult to play against, bandage round his knee, bandage round his arm, really tough to play against, and he's, a, he's causing them, the centre-backs, an absolute turmoil at the minute. He began he's making it really hard for him. He began at Sheffield United, he's a Blades fan, I think his only time here at St James's Park was to watch Newcastle play and beat Sheffield Wednesday in the uh, in the in the Premier League, but he idolised Shearer growing up. Alan Shearer, I don't think uh, Alan Shearer will be too impressed with him at the moment. It's a typical type of Shearer performance, backing in, being hard to play against. But if you notice now what they've done, Newcastle, they've put Joe Linton in front of him and dropped the two centre backs off. That's how much problems he's given them. So they drop Joe Linton in, who normally plays on the on on the left hand side of a three in midfield, to to play in front of him be hard to play against that's the voice of the former England international Jonathan Woodgate who's here on Five Live as well as the world service from the BBC as the ball goes down the line towards Fraser and uh, just coming across into that challenge was Williams and I don't think the referee is going to take any action against the Cambridge United defender but he's just called over Jack Iredale as well it was uh, a pacey ball down that uh, that left-hand side, and Fraser was caught by the sliding defender. He was just caught out slightly by Pearson, got on the wrong side of him there. But he, Williams, has done a really good job. That's his first real mistake of the game. Hopefully it doesn't punish him. So this is a free kick for Newcastle United, and it's in a dangerous position. It's on the far side, the left. They're playing from left to right. They're attacking the Gallagher, and it's in front of the east stand. It's Ritchie with an outswinger. In it comes now. And it will run to safety and behind. Is it for a corner? No, it's a goal kick. Goal at Vale Park, John Akers. And it's come for Brentford. The Premier League side are surely through now. 25 minutes to go. Off the bench. He's back. Brian and Burmo with a lovely finish. One on one with the keeper. Port Vale nil. Brentford two. Another goal in the cup this time at Oakwell. Adam Cotier. Barnsley 2, Barrow 1, Barrow back in the game, what a brilliant goal from Ollie Banks, a free kick from 30 yards out, pretty central, wonderful shot from Banks, his 10th goal of the season for the League 2 side, and the 10 men are back in it, 2-1 Barnsley. Cambridge without a win in three, they hadn't scored in those last three games, they've been affected by Covid, but they're leading here against Newcastle United by a goal to nil, Cher heads it forward, long looping header, 
Goes to Joel Linton. Joel Linton tries to play it forward. Willock can't get into the game. They try to release Ironside through the middle. Cher tidies up. Back towards Dubravka, who shows no ill effects of that injury that he picked up whilst they conceded that goal. As now it's with Ritchie on that far side, the left. Joel Linton plays it back. Cher, Cambridge just stand off Cher, runs forward now, spreads a long searching diagonal ball. Almiron's first touch went away from him. He had his shirt pulled there a little bit by Harrison Dunk, but it goes out for a throw. All the urgency now from Newcastle, taken by Trippier, comes to Shelby. Shelby waits, behind him is Almiron to take over. Goes infield, Cher, forward of the centre circle, passes the ball, strikes the heels of Nibs, comes out towards Ritchie. Now feeds it to Fraser. Nibs gets a foot in there. Picked back up once more by Fraser. To Ritchie level with the penalty area. The two combine. Try and get round the back. They succeed. Fraser looks up, delivers it in low. And then Brophy manages to hook it away. Only up in the air rather than properly away. Almiron with his back to goal outside the penalty area turns. Newcastle putting pressure on the league one side. 20 minutes remain. In it comes from Shelby. Joel Linton was being held there by Okadina. Kept in play, Fraser delivers the cross, into the penalty box it goes. Trippier strikes the shoulder of Brophy, up in the air, headed away by Dunk. Backs to the wall from Cambridge. Almiron gets away from Houlihan. Almiron still going, down to his knees. And eventually, the, oh, I thought the referee was going to give him. He looked like he was being clearly impeded. I thought, I thought he was getting brought down by Wes Houlihan there. Then another one came in, then another one, and I can't believe he didn't get a, give a, a foul for that. But look at the, look at the defending, the defending there by... Cambridge centre half, Ockendina, different class. They are really putting everything on the line here. Cambridge United, but Newcastle with Willock to Joel Linton, stabs it back. Shelby central position, Ritchie comes forward. Ritchie has a man over. Fraser left hand side. Fraser with the cross over the head of Willock, headed up in the air by Dunk and behind. Corner kick to Newcastle, red card at the Hawthorns, Masferuki. West Brom still lead, but Cedric Kipre is off for two bookable offences. The second a silly shirt took when he was on a yellow, so West Brom down to ten men. They still lead Brighton 1-0, but they're down a player. In comes the corner from that left-hand side. Climbing high was Digby at the near post to head it away. They still lead by a goal to nil. That was a commanding header by the Cambridge captain to Sam Maximan. Right side of the penalty area. He twists, checks inside, pulls it back. Willock shot blocked. Cambridge United comes out to Ritchie. There was Nibs again. Behind it goes for another corner. The defence. There's been a goal at Kidderminster, John Murray. And Kidderminster of National League North are level. Their captain, Sam Austin, forced the shot past the goalkeeper, Raphael, down to his right, but it's somehow found a way in. And Kidderminster of National League North are level with Reading, 1-1. Here is Sam Maximan with the cross. Header away this time by Iredale. Comes back towards Brophy. So Kidderminster of National League North, 79 places beneath Reading in the English pyramid system with an equaliser and Newcastle United here really putting Cambridge under pressure with 18 minutes remaining Joel Linton Ritchie on the overlap left hand side cross court by Meatoff another goal at Vale Park John Akers hello hello Vale they're back in it Port Vale 1 Brentford 2 and it's a really good finish from Key and Harris so we got 20 minutes plus added time and Vale are throwing everything at it Port Vale 1 Brentford 2 Stephen is 2 Walsall 1 is the latest score in League 2 what is it about the FA Cup it's, it's what an unbelievable tournament what an unbelievable competition but I do have to say, uh, Denno, about the defending there from Cambridge United. Dig beat Rose. Oh. Honest, a fantastic head of the block then from Ockendina. Different level of defending. And I love seeing like defenders put the body on the line. There's nothing better. Been a monumental effort from them. Absolutely monumental. Cambridge United leading by a goal to nil. 17 minutes of normal time remaining. Those hoarse voices from Cambridge, all 5,000 of them up in the gods, now watching Cambridge have a free kick on this near side, the left. Houlihan to take it, about six yards up from the byline, left-footed, didn't beat the first man, comes out to Brophy, plays it first time, little bit of a slip by May, but he just throws his head into the challenge to stop Sam Maximan breaking clear. That gives you everything 
about the levels of desire coursing through this Cambridge United team. That's exactly what he means. He just dived on the ball head first. You're not getting past me. No one gets past me. I tell you what, how brave is he to do that when he had two Newcastle players steaming in him? Here is Willock. Willock now to Trippier. Trippier plays the ball forward. Almiron takes it high on the chest inside the penalty area, turns, comes out of the penalty box, looks up, switches play. Ritchie, left corner of the penalty area. Ritchie with the cross. Headed out once more. This time it was by Adam May. Trippier plays it forward. Joel Linton. Joel Linton with an effort saved by Mitoff. We will go now to Borenwood, John Southall. Borenwood won, Wimbledon nil, but they've had a couple of chances. Borenwood to put this to bed, Reese through on goal, just lack conviction, good challenge to clear it away. And then Mafuta with a glancing header wide. We've played 72 minutes, Borenwood of the National League. Lead, Wimbledon of League One by goal to nil. Cambridge United still leading here through that goal scored by Joe Ironside. What a story. Jack Lancaster is going to be coming on very, very soon. 21-year-old that they signed in the summer uh, from Ipswich Town. Somebody who, at 21 years of age, they still have high hopes for. As Trippier plays the ball inside to, uh, to Willock. Time's running out for Newcastle. Forget getting through to the, uh, the fourth round, just to take us to extra time for the Premier League side. Being embarrassed here at home by Cambridge United. Almiron to Willock. Sam Maximan, Trippier, back with Willock once again. Willock on the edge of the area. There is no way through. He will try and find a way through. Trippier then stands over the cross towards the far post. And again, so many amber shirts back. He goes behind for a goal kick. The Let's get the team news from Hull. Conor McNamara. 24 league places between Hull and Everton. Hull make three changes to their defeat at Blackpool. Both wing-backs are replaced. It looks like top scorer Keane Lewis-Potter will play a bit deeper on the wing. Everton give a debut to new signing Vitaly Michalenko. Rafa Benitez names a strong team. Everton with only one win in their last 12. Jonathan, we have 15 minutes remaining. And Newcastle United are trailing by a goal to nil. It's going to be the longest quarter of an hour for many a Cambridge United fan. They'll have to get used to it because it's going to be all guns blazing here for Newcastle. But I'm just, if you look at the coaching performance here from the Cambridge team and look what Mark Bond has done to them, the difficult to beat, the beat in Newcastle, one nil at St James's. By the way, it's been deserved. Oh. It's been deserved. They've done absolutely fantastically well. They've had opportunities. And for me, it's going to be backs against the wall from now, but they'll stand up to it. The two centre halves have been amazing. The centre midfielder Digby won, has won second balls, he's battled, he's won first balls, he's sprayed it about. It's been a really good game, really good cup tie. We'll go to Wigan now, Katie Smith. And it's Wigan 2, Blackburn 1. It started with a free kick, 25 yards out, floated into the box. It looked like the keeper had a hand on it at the far post, the ball came loose and it was centre-back Jack Watmore who scrambles it in. We know how much they love the FA Cup, it's Wigan who lead with just over 15 minutes left to play. 13 minutes remain here at St James's Park and Cambridge United are still leading by a goal to nil. The first time in the third round since 2017. Sean Derry was the manager. They lost out to Leeds United that day at the Abbey Stadium. They've only been in the fourth round once in the last 21 seasons. But they could be going through to the fourth round here with what would be an epic performance and an epic scoreline for Mark Bonner and his team. 1-0. 12 and a half minutes remain. Okadina should see it out for a goal kick. And indeed he does. Look at the celebration on the Cambridge United Cambridge United players when Okadina makes that great bit of defending. They're all over to him again. I said earlier on, when you see uh, Benucci doing it and you see Cilellini doing it, the Cambridge players are doing it here. They know how important this game is. Another goal at Vale Park, John Akers. Oh, and what a goal from Brian and Burmo of Brentford. It's 3-1 to Brentford on his own from the halfway line. Power and pace, left foot, in 
off the post, scores in front of the Brentford fans, should have sent them through. Vale have just hit the post at the other end and was throwing everything at them. Vale one, Brentford three. Manquillo has replaced Richie. The results earlier in the FA Cup, Mansfield two, Middlesbrough three, Bristol City nil, Fulham one after extra time. Burnley one, Huddersfield Town two, Coventry one, Derby nil, Hartlepool two, Blackpool one, Millwall one, Crystal Palace two. These are the latest scores. Barnsley 2, the 10 men of Barrow 1. Boreham Wood 1, Wimbledon 0. Kidderminster 1, Reading 1. Leicester City, the holders 3, Watford 1. Newcastle 0, Cambridge 1 here. Peterborough lead Bristol Rovers 2-1. Port Vale 1, Brentford 3. Queen's Park Rangers and Rotherham still goalless. West Brom down to 10 men, still lead Brighton by a goal to nil. It's Wigan 2, Blackburn Rovers 1. They're the latest scores in the FA Cup. Live, 5 live in the World Service. And we have 11 minutes remaining. Joel Linton. Now it's with Kraft. Trippier. Not the debut that maybe he would have envisaged. Back to Kraft inside the penalty area. Goes behind for a corner kick. Even though that Cambridge think through Adam May, it's a goal kick, but they've still got some defending to do. They'll be taking a long, long time. This is when concentration levels need to come in, because your body's fatiguing, you, your mind's got to be right. You've got to get through this next 15 minutes. Trippier with a corner kick, delivered with pace, comes out to Sam Maximan, rides up his chest, edge of the area, tries to spin away from the challenge, comes then to Almiron, overruns it, Houlihan will bring it clear, Houlihan though can't break, he was stopped by Shelby, he holds on to the ball though, Houlihan, battling away for it, doing ever so well, and eventually he goes down, and he runs into Trippier as well, who stays down, Willock takes over for Newcastle on the right-hand side, here is Joe Willock, Held up by Brophy. They've doubled up on him now. Houlihan is busy, and it goes out of play for a Newcastle throw. And Trippier, holding his left ankle, is back on his feet. It looks like an ankle twist, I think, from Trippier. He looks like he's wants a soldier on in the game. Here is Joel Linton. Tries to thread it through. Out of play. It goes for a goal kick. We'll go back to Agbre. National League North. Kidderminster Harriers against the championship side Reading. John Murray. Yes, Kidderminster, who have levelled it up in the second half. Puskas' uh, goal just before half-time meant that Reading led at the break, but Sam Austin, the Kidderminster captain, with the equaliser, it's 1-1, and we could have a grandstand last 15 minutes here at Agbra yet. Well, we've got nine and a half minutes of normal time remaining here at St James's Park, John, and Newcastle still trail by a goal to nil. We'll go now to Boreham Wood, John Southall. Boreham Wood still lead Wimbledon by one goal to nil. They've got 12 minutes left to hold on to this Wimbledon, finally showing a little bit of intent in the game. They've never been in the fourth round of the FA Cup, Boreham Wood. They are so close now, 11 minutes to play. Boreham Wood won, Wimbledon nil. First non-league side to reach the third round in consecutive seasons since Eastleigh five years ago. Cambridge United, you might recall in the fourth round taking Manchester United to a, a replay in 2015 that was the last time that they were in the fourth round there are no replays Newcastle United can only dream of extra time at this stage Cambridge United looking to try and take up as much time as they possibly can have a free kick on this left hand side Houlihan to take it in it goes headed out by Cher comes to Harrison Dunk shot charge down Manquillo feeds it to Willock, quickly turns, looking towards Sam Maxima. There's been a goal now at the Hawthorns, Masferuki. Brighton have pegged West Brom back, substitute Jakob Moda lashing in. It's now 10 men, West Brom 1, Brighton 1. No stranger to suffering cup upsets, Newcastle United. We talked before about in the 50s, and they were a good side in the 50s, Newcastle United, as far as the FA Cup was concerned. They won it three times in the 50s, but Scunthorpe and Lindsay United knocked them out in 58 they suffered a giant killing at the hands of Bedford Town in 64 but this would be a huge huge upset even despite Newcastle's struggles in the Premier League but the, the They've struggled in the second half, haven't they? They haven't really hit passes forward. They haven't. They've given it away that many times. Cambridge have stayed in the shape, deep block, hard to play against, narrow. But Newcastle can't break them down. They can't break them down with the passes because of that well drilled. 
Here is Kraft. Cambridge still lead 1-0, but seven minutes remain. Ball played forward now. Almiron coming forward. Almiron having to wait. Almiron trying to patiently get it through to Sam Maximan. Sam Maximan now to Willett. The move breaks down. There's been a goal at Adra. John Murray and Kidderminster of National League North lead Reading of the Championship by two goals to one. It came from a corner. It was an almighty scramble. The ball rattled around. There were so many people in there. And in the end, I think it's Amari Morgan-Smith, the number nine, who forced it over the line into the Reading net. And the cup upset is on here at Agbra, Alan Hutton. Yeah, it was an old-fashioned stramash in the six-yard box. It's a really well-worked corner in swinger for Sterling. And then there's Morgan Smith just to get ahead on it, we think. But great goal. Kidderminster 2, Reading 1, upset time at Agbra. Stories abound on FA Cup third round day. Huddersfield knocked out Premier League Burnley earlier. But Boreham Wood knocking out Burnley by a goal to nil is on the cards. Kidderminster of National League North knocking out Reading is also on the cards. And here at St James's Park, another upset. Newcastle nil, Cambridge United one, with just over five minutes remaining. And it's definitely on the cards. You can see it. You can see how much these Cambridge United players want it. You can see him, Digby, fist clinched telling this place to keep on going, staying strong in your mind. It's a difficult period for them now, but they're all keeping at it. Ironside leading the line. Um, they've done so well at the back, keeping a clean sheet up to now, putting the bodies on the line. And when Hulahan's come on, he's added that little bit of quality in midfield to put his foot on the ball. You'll be hearing a lot more of Mark Bonnet, mark my words, in the years to come. This 36-year-old, this talented young coach, in his second spell at the club, 2002, he was working as a coach in the club's schools programme when they were a conference side. Six and a half seasons he spent at South End United's academy and then he returned in 2011. He's been an academy coach, a first team coach, the assistant manager and now the manager. And he's masterminding an upset here at St James's Park. Let's go to Oakwell, Adam Cottier. Where Barrow, with ten men, have equalised. It's 2-2, and Anthony Glennon, who signed on loan from Burnley on Thursday, has scored on his debut. Close-range finish after a wonderful piece of construction down the right-hand Dunk side, and Barrow ball. have equalised. Cambridge United! On the flag is up. That was short-lived. Harrison Dunk had passed the ball forward. Jack Lancaster had raced onto it. But the flag was raised after he put the ball past Dubravka. They're getting in and in, they're getting in them channels between Cher and uh, Kafta. They're getting straight in and it's difficult now. It's difficult for Newcastle because they're pushing forward. They want to try to score this goal and they're going to be leaving gaps. And it was a quick VAR check. That would have been the knockout blow. Newcastle United, though, are still on the ropes with four minutes remaining. They trail by a goal to nil. Another goal at Leicester, Hamish Marshall. It's game over here, it's Leicester 4, Watford 1. A great save denied Adam Ola Lookman, but it fell to Mark Albright and eight yards out. He made no mistake, Leicester into round four, the lead 4-1. Trippier to Almiron, right-hand side of the penalty area to Sam Maximan. Sam Maximan waits. Everyone back for Cambridge United in front of the Gallagate and dancing around the ball, right-hand side. Almiron, 30 yards out from goal, goes short and square. Willock. Can't find a way through. Shelby with his back to goal. Now to Sam Maximan. If ever they needed his magic, it's now. Right-hand side. Delivers a cross towards the far post. Mitov stretching. Got a hand to that. Very good touch by the goalkeeper. He committed himself. Here is Willock outside the area. Willock right-footed. Plays it high and wide. And the cheers are from the Cambridge fans, Jonathan. Clinch fist by Mitov again. A great punch out there. Maximan did ever so well to get the ball back post. And I thought Joel Linton was just going to come in. Power one down. But me, I've got a hand to it. And look how pleased the Cambridge United players are. But they're out on the feet. There's a few down at the minute. They're really, really struggling. They need to keep on going. There's not long left. Five minutes. Kidderminster 2, Reading 1. Boreham Wood 1, Wimbledon 0. Barrow down to 10 men have fought back 2-2 two -two at Barnsley. Certainly there has been no shortage of drama on FA Cup third round day on 5 Live and Hull City Everton to come at 5.30. Cambridge United. Here is Lancaster coming through again, just stopped by Manquillo on the covering run, the fullback. 
and Shelby now picks it up, but time is desperately running out. Two and a half minutes of normal time remain. Out it goes towards Fraser, driving his way down that left-hand side, delivering it towards the far post, headed onto the roof of the net. Did you see Hull on the run? run back? Hull's been another goal. Boreham Wood, John Southall. It's absolute lift-off in here. Boreham Wood 2, AFC Wimbledon 0. He's been on the pitch for literally one minute, but Adrian Clifton has just guided the ball into the bottom right-hand corner from five yards out. And surely now, Boreham Wood are heading to the fourth round. Boreham Wood 2, Wimbledon 0. So they have a cushion. There's no such cushion for Kidderminster. Still 2-1 up against Reading. And Cambridge don't have a cushion here. But when you're looking, Jonathan, on the balance of play, for all the pressure that Newcastle may have had, they don't look like a side that you feel Cambridge are going to concede. No, it doesn't look like that, the way Cambridge are defending. And did you see the way Rez H- Wes Hulan got back into his shape? Look at him working tirelessly now. They don't look like they're going to concede. They're compact. The body's on the line. And they're doing unbelievably well at the minute to, to, to see this game out. Almiron on that far side. We're entering the last 60 seconds. Cries of yellows, yellows from that strong travelling support. Now it's with Kraft, right corner of the area. Trippier to Sam Maximan. How much stoppage time will there be against these weary Cambridge limbs who've given absolutely everything? Trippier on the right-hand side can't deliver the ball just yet. Trippier waits inside. Shelby now. Shelby might shoot. He will. Strikes Digby. Comes back. Tired effort that from Kraft, and it was straight at Meetoff. Another goal on Oakwell, Adam Cottier. Can we get to Barnsley for Barnsley Barrow? There's been a fifth goal. No, but I can tell you that Barnsley are now leading Barrow by three goals to two. Devante Cole has scored in the 83rd minute. Cambridge United now here have five minutes of added on time to see. An additional five, a minimum of five. The lactate's building up in these legs now with the Cambridge players. I've been in this position before, the lactate's building, you've got to concentrate on it. You've got to put your bodies on the line. They made another fantastic block there from a Newcastle shot. The need to keep on doing this work, just bringing the, pit, bringing the play across the pitch and being hard to beat, being compact. Stop balls going in the box. When it comes in there, get your head on it. Head it away, do everything you can possible. They call it the Cathedral on the Hill. Those 5,000 Cambridge fans now are praying high up in the gods. It's their voices that you can hear, and they will celebrate like no other. There's been another late goal. This time it's at Wigan. Katie Smith. And it's an equaliser for Championship side Blackburn Rovers. It's Wigan 2, a Blackburn 2. Started with a free kick. The uh, Wigan fans were not happy with that. Right hand side, 20 yards out, floated in, found the head of Ayala. He headed it down to the ground and it bounced in past the keeper at the far post. A couple of minutes left to play. 2 2. 2 2 there. Extra time, remember, for those games that are level. Got to be settled on the day as here we are with Fraser to Joel Linton back to Fraser forced out very high didn't keep the ball in play it's been claimed anyway by Meetoff. Newcastle United and Meetoff will quite rightly use as much time as he possibly can to eat up valuable seconds Jonathan Newcastle had more opportunities first half and were better first half they had four outstanding opportunities in that first half second half Meetoff hasn't really had to do much in terms of making big saves. Port Vale 1, Brentford 4 now is the latest score. Let's get the latest from Kidderminster. John Murray. Well, Kidderminster still lead Reading by two goals to one, but we will have, listen to this, 12 minutes of added time at the end of this match. So there's a long way yet for Kidderminster to go for yet another FA Cup upset in their history but they are in front and this would be one of these stories of the day this is Houlihan for Cambridge United so we will get the closing stages of that game at Agra here on BBC Radio 5 Live with John Murray and Alan Hutton Cambridge are leading by a goal to nil Newcastle break out of defence time is desperately running out two and a half minutes remaining 
Quickly, Adam Cotter, there's been a late goal at Oakwell. James Jones has equalised for Barrow. Great cross on the right-hand side from Hotton and a header from close range. 3-3, we're headed for extra time. Sam Maximan with a cross, kept alive by Joel Linton across the face of goal and Digby manages to hook it away. Anything in row Z. Get that ball into row Z now. What a defensive effort they have put in the League One side. They really have worked absolutely tirelessly. Barnsley's going to extra time at 3-3. Elsewhere, Queen's Park Rangers rather an extra time at 0-0. West Brom Brighton 1-1. Wigan 2, Blackburn 2. Newcastle now with Cher. Right-hand side on the volley. He's absolutely floored Harrison Dunk. What a block. That is one of the best blocks I've seen. He's flat out on the floor, took it right in the face. What? And now he's up on his feet. That's like a Tyson Fury moment. Well, the knockout blow is going to go the other way as far as Cambridge are concerned. But that just epitomises everything that Cambridge United, what they have produced here today. What an effort it has been. 90 seconds remain. Trippy with a corner for Newcastle. Oh. What a save by Meetoff. Joel Linton's header and Meetoff with a flying save. What, what a, a save. save that was. That was going right in the top corner. Joel Linton risked above everyone, smashed it into the net. And what a save by Meetoff. His players are all over him. Congratulate him on that save. They're going to make a substitution with 60 seconds remaining. And it's going to be Liam O'Neill who's going to be coming on. Will the corner be taken before the change can be made? Mitov's going to take a little swig of water. Just tosses his water bottle to the side. And it's going to be Adam May who comes off. Look how brave they are, though, by leaving Hurahan up front. Look at him. They've the realised the keeper's gone up. It's a great bit of uh, coaching there. Leave him, leaving Hurahan up front. And Mark Eos have to go back to Mark him. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So brave. By my watch, we're inside the last 20 seconds. It's now or never for Newcastle. Trailing by a goal to nil. The referee is making sure that the ball is in the quadrant over on that far side, the left, in front of the Gallagate end. The corner kick comes in now from the left. Dubravka's up from the back. It goes over everybody's heads. It's kept by St Maximan. He pulls the ball back. Almiron. Oh, it's a wayward effort. The celebrations are beginning in the Cambridge end now because the five minutes have elapsed, another goal at Oakwell, Adam Cottier. Barnsley four, Barrow three, Carlton Morris to sub with a low shot from inside the area, right-footed into the corner, it looks like the championship side are going through, 4-3. Cambridge United leading 1-0, the five minutes have elapsed, and we're just waiting now for the final whistle from referee Michael Salisbury. Newcastle United's dreadful run in the FA Cup is set to continue. Humbled at home by Cambridge United. All eyes on the referee. Cambridge United's coaching staff are desperate for the final whistle to be blown. The 5,000 travelling support are desperate to hear the shrill of the whistle. And there it is. Cambridge United have embarrassed Newcastle with an almighty shock. But a monumental effort, and Mark Bonner's side thoroughly deserve their victory and their place in round four, with Joe Ironside the match winner, but also Dimitar Mitov with his heroics in goal. They've beaten Newcastle United by a goal to nil. What a performance by these Cambridge United players. Every single one of them, the keeper, outstanding Mitov, and what a performance by the manager. He set this team up to be hard to beat, and they did that. But let me tell you, they could have had a couple more goals, but performance there from a young 36-year-old coach who deserves absolutely everything he's getting. First-class performance from Cambridge United. Another late goal, it's at Wigan, Katie Smith. And it's Wigan 3, Blackburn 2 in the 92nd minute. Thilo Asgard, an absolute beauty, curling it outside the area, right bang into the top right corner. He scored the winner when I watched them in the league a few weeks ago to keep their unbeaten run intact. He may well have done that today and kept them in the FA Cup. We've got about 30 seconds left to play. It's Wigan 3, Blackburn 2. And another late goal again at Oakwell, Adam Cottier. Barnsley 4, Barrow 4, Josh Kay, who used to play for Barnsley with a shot from outside the box, snapshot into the corner. I think we're heading for extra time now, 4-4. Four, four. And for Boreham Wood as well. They'll be in the fourth round too. John Southall. 
Boreham Wood 2, Wimbledon 0. 34 places between these two sides, but it's absolute bedlam here. And for the first time in their history, Boreham Wood are into the fourth round of the FA Cup. Goals in each half. The first from Tyrone Marsh, an absolute beauty. And then the second, Adrian Clifton, first touch of the game, guided it into the right-hand corner in front of the North Bank. And what scenes we have here. And Boreham Wood are in the hat for the fourth round. They've won 2 0. We have scenes here at St James's Park with Cambridge players celebrating in front of the Hawks from Cambridge United. High up in the gods, away to our left. It's Cambridge who are 41 places beneath their Premier League opposition. But what about this? Kidderminster Harriers, 79 places in the English system behind Reading. And the closing stage of Agra, we can go there now. Commentary from Alan Hutton and John Murray. Well, thank you, Ian. We've had seven minutes of added time. Twelve have been uh, actually signalled, but I think we could have at least two or three minutes more than that. And Kidderminster of National League North lead Reading of the Championship by two goals to one. They were 1-0 down at half-time. George Puska scoring the goal, but the Kidderminster captain, Sam Austin, and then number nine, Amari Morgan-Smith, have scored the goals in the second half that have turned this game round and leave Kidderminster on the brink of another great FA Cup upset. More on this in a moment, but first to the Hawthorns and Maz Faruqi. And it's finished 10 men, West Brom, West Brom, sorry, one, Brighton one. So we are heading into extra time. Evan Ferguson thought he put Brighton into the fourth round, deep into the second half. Alexis McAllister had a good chance as well. Brighton trying to make their 10-man advantage count in the second half, but it is West Brom one, Brighton one after 90 minutes, and we're heading into extra time. So 2-1 Kidderminster leave. I see Russ, Russ Penn, the coach, just bouncing the ball up into the stand. That might take up a few more seconds. And... Um, a throw in on the halfway line for Reading. Uh, we will go first, though, to QPR and Aaron Paul. No, no, here. This has been a game of little quality, John. End to end, no goals. A lot of fans heading for the exit. Some don't know that we've got extra time. Some just don't fancy another half hour in the rain. We're into extra time. QPR nil, Rotherham nil. Thank you, Aaron. Kidderminster 2, Reading 1. Deep, deep in added time as uh, Osorio puts in a challenge in centre field on uh, Montrose, who's just come onto the field. That's a free kick for Kidderminster. Alan Hutton, do Kidderminster deserve this? Yeah, yeah, they do, actually. Uh, I thought they've, they've battled really well throughout the, the 90 minutes and, and really deserve their lead. So it's a free kick to Kidderminster, who are in absolutely no hurry here. Kidderminster, great upsets in the FA Cup during the course of their history. This place has seen some famous FA Cup stories and another one is just a few minutes away and the goalkeeper, uh, Luke Simpson, is going to be yellow-carded for time-wasting. You know, the third round Saturday, the three o'clock third round Saturday, has been watered down because of the way that the games have been moved around. But this has been an absolute classic this afternoon with Newcastle knocked out by Cambridge. Boreham Wood are through to the fourth round after knocking out Wimbledon. We've got that Barnsley Barrow game, which is level at 4 4, and plenty more stories besides, and more commentary to come as well. Hull City Everton is underway at half past five. You'll hear that on Five Live, you can watch it on BBC One. But Kidderminster now with the ball inside the Reading half. Reading, who picked up more injuries today, an inexperienced team that was put out by Velko Pornovic. We've had stoppages as well because smoke bombs were thrown under the field. The, uh, the referee was unhappy about objects being thrown at the Reading goalkeeper too, so that was a long stoppage. Re uh, Reading coming forward, the ball is played back. Kidderminster central defender Nathan Cameron is onto this down in the right back area. It's very gloomy down in that corner and he's been fouled and it's a free kick to Kidderminster. Absolute great defending. That, that, I mean, that's what you want. Take the pressure off your team. He feels the nudge in his back and Cameron goes down. Excellent play by him there. Just to make this absolutely clear to you, amidst all of the stories, Kidderminster are the rank outsiders left in this season's FA Cup. The lowest place club left in it, 79 places in the league above them are Reading, who've got all sorts of problems in the championship, but Kidderminster are on the brink of knocking them out. Full time at Leicester, Hamish Marshall. It's Leicester 4, Watford 1, Foxes on the FA Cup hunt again. 10 defeats and 12 for Claudia Ranieri for Watford now. Telemans, Madison, Barnes and all Brighton getting the goals. 
So the holders are safely through to the fourth round. We've got, well, I make it one minute of the 12 to play, but I, I think we'll have at least two or three minutes beyond that because of further stoppages. So Kidderminster still in front, the ball deep inside the Reading half. It's all over at Port Vale, John Akers. Port Vale won, Brentford four, it was a proper good cup tie, but Brian and Burma with an 11 minute hat-trick off the bench, sealed it for Brentford, nice story, Kean Harrod scored for Vale on loan from Huddersfield with his first senior goal, the 19 year old. Vale who did well, won, Brentford four. Kidderminster on the attack down the right-hand side. Austin's waiting in the middle, but Fremantle, the substitute, has taken it down towards the corner flag, even though the option was there in the middle. And he's won a throw-in as well. And um, another change is about to be made, so let's get the full-time news while that happens from Peterborough, from Jonathan Ledgard. The other team in Cambridgeshire, Peterborough United, beaten by non-league Chorley last season, have seen off League 2 Bristol Rovers by two goals to one. Sammy Smodic should have had a hat-trick, but he at least scored the opener, cancelled out by Paul Coote's penalty, and then substitute Barley Mumba on his posh debut on loan from Norwich, showed his teammates how to do it. Wonderful, amazing run, 2-1 Peterborough. Kidderminster are still making this substitution, so the full-time news from Oakwell. What a game you've had, Adam Cottier. Extraordinary, 4-4 four, four at full-time, we're into extra time. Five goals in the last 12 minutes of the match. Barrow were 2-0 down here, they played more than 50 minutes with 10 men, but a brilliant goal from Ollie Banks got them back in it. And 4-4 four, four came from Josh Kay, a former Barnsley player, unbelievable, 4-4. Four, four. Uh, Chris Jones has the full-time news, Harlequins Exeter. Harlequins 14, Exeter 12, remarkable finish here. Exeter were 14-7 up with minutes remaining. They looked on course for a famous win with 14 men, but Marcus Smith's crossfield kick found Andre Estesen to score, and then Smith kicked the goal from the touchline to win the match in sensational style. Harlequins 14, Exeter 12. Still we play here at Agbra in the 14th minute of added time. The home supporters, you can hear the whistles. They want this to be the final kick. It's a goal kick for Raphael, who was beaten by the shot from Sammy Austin that made it 1-1. And then the scramble for the winner. I mean, the scramble of scrambles, Alan Hutton, that was. Yeah, that was an old-school scramble. Right into the, the middle of the six-yard box. Everybody going for it, putting bodies on the line. But Morgan Smith would just get the final touch. It was a brilliant finish from him. So we're playing on well beyond five o'clock. We're into sports report time. And there should be some great interviews and stories for you to listen to over the course of the next hour. But the action is still live. Other ties going to extra time. Kidderminster with this free kick inside their own half that is hammered, hit long by Alex Penny. The Kidderminster right back up towards the edge of the box. Then it's headed out towards the left-hand side by Montrose. It's out of play. Still we go. Russ Penn, the manager of Kidderminster, Pointing to his watch, we're in the 15th minute of added time. Forward from Richards, Fremantle on the chase. Fremantle with a touch, he's been bundled over by Holtzman. No free kick. Reading come forward. This might be the final chance to take this to extra time, but Alex Penny slides in for Kidderminster to put it out of play. There it is. There it is. There it is. And everyone's on their feet. We've got an old fashioned pitch invasion at Agbra. Kidderminster are still going in the FA Cup in 2022. It's another great story for this great club of the FA Cup. National League North, the rank outsiders, the lowest place team left in the competition, have knocked out Reading with all of their problems. They were 1 0 down here. They've turned it right around in the second half. Great, great scenes to see here of celebration on the pitch at Agbra. And my goodness, they deserve that, Alan Hutton. Look, this is what it's all about, the FA Cup. Special moments, and we've just witnessed one here. I mean, the energy levels from this Kidderminster team, who, mind you, haven't played since the 18th of December, put on a display like that is absolutely unbelievable. And all around the centre circle, the Kidderminster players in their red kits, you can pick them out clearly there. 
and uh, there's a little bit of trouble actually down on the side of the pitch as well and, and some are they Reading, Reading I think fans they're Reading over fans to Raymond Street with the yeah, manager with the, with the manager Velko Panovic some very angry Reading supporters who have come to the side of the pitch and uh, and the coaching staff the Reading coaching staff have, have disappeared down the tunnel which I think is a very wise thing to do because they, they are very very angry and unhappy those what five six Reading fans who are still arguing actually and, and I think a member of the Reading coaching staff yeah. has actually gone out there to speak to them and try to reason with them and, 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 and talk to them. So that's happening on the side of the pitch. But in the middle of the pitch, there are, there are dozens and dozens of people and great Kidderminster celebrations. They're through, they go through into the fourth round. It's another wonderful chapter in the FA Cup history of Kidderminster Harriers who've beaten Reading by two goals to one. A remarkable afternoon in the FA Cup. Some big stories uh, as well, and there will be more to come. Remember, Barnsley Barrow is going into extra time. Four all at Oakwell. Barrow down to ten men for the whole of the second half, and they began it 2-0 down. West Brom Brighton also in extra time. West Brom down to ten men. QPR Rotherham in extra time, and there has been a goal there, Aaron Paul. Oh, Mark, we've had a goal finally. QPR nil, Rotherham won. After both sides have spurned chance after chance after chance, it's Michael Ehekwe with what is a brilliant finish after the long diagonal ball. It found Ehekwe in the box, and he just side-footed it past Jordan Archer in the QPR goal. QPR nil, Rotherham one. Still plenty of time left in extra time. And a goal in extra time at the Hawthorns, Maz Faruqi. Brighton are ahead, Neil Mope has put them 2-1 up in this first period of extra time, side-footing into the bottom right-hand corner. So 10-man West Brom are finally behind. West Brom 1, Brighton 2. <sighs> what an afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Mark Chapman. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live at 7 minutes past 5. And this is Sports Report. The headlines on FA Cup third round Saturday. Newcastle are out. Turned and side! Joe Ironside for Cambridge United! who stunned Newcastle here at St James's Park. They dared to dream, and now they have a lead here against the Premier League side. Two non-league sides are through. Kidderminster. The goal stand. Kidderminster are in front. It was forced over the line. We've got great celebrations here, and it's Kidderminster 2, Reading 1. And Boreham Wood, who are into the fourth round for the first time. Oh, it's in. It's Clifton. It's Adrian Clifton, he did it in the second round. He's done it in the third round. And Boreham Wood, they're on the cusp of FA Cup history. Elsewhere, Burnley lose at home to Huddersfield. League One Wigan beat Championship side Blackburn. League Two Hartlepool beat Blackpool of the Championship. As you've heard, West Brom and Brighton are in extra time with Brighton 2-1 up. Barnsley and Barrow also in extra time after that one finished 4-all. Crystal Palace had to come from behind to beat Millwall. The holders Leicester saw off Watford. There are five more ties to be played today, including Chelsea against National League Chesterfield and our next commentary, Hull versus Everton. Sunderland miss out on top spot in League One after conceding a 99th minute equaliser at Wickham. That finishes 3 all. England will need to bat through the final day to save the Sydney Test after a second Usman Khawaja century. Harlequins beat Exeter in Rugby Union's Premiership. We'll squeeze in some reaction to the day's big stories ahead of Hull against Everton after the classified football results with Charlotte Green. The Emirates FA Cup third round. Barnsley 4, Barrow 4, extra time being played. Birmingham City against Plymouth Argyle, late kickoff. Boreham Wood 2, AFC Wimbledon 0. Bristol City 0, Fulham 1, after extra time. Burnley 1, Huddersfield Town 2. Chelsea against Chesterfield, late kickoff. Coventry City 1, Derby County 0. Hartlepool United 2, Blackpool 1. Hull City against Everton, late kickoff. Kidderminster Harriers 2, 
Reading 1. Leicester City 4, Watford 1. Mansfield Town 2, Middlesbrough 3. Millwall 1, Crystal Palace 2. Newcastle United 0, Cambridge United 1. Peterborough United 2, Bristol Rovers 1. Port Vale 1, Brentford 4. Queen's Park Rangers 0, Rotherham United 0. Extra time being played. Swansea City against Southampton, late kickoff. West Bromwich Albion 1, Brighton and Hove Albion 1. Extra time being played. Wigan Athletic 3, Blackburn Rovers 2. Yeovil Town against AFC Bournemouth, late kickoff. Skybet League 1, Accrington Stanley 1, Milton Keynes Dons 1. Cheltenham Town 1, Burton Albion 1. Doncaster Rovers 0, Fleetwood Town 1. Gillingham 0, Ipswich Town 4. Lincoln City 2, Oxford United 0. Wickham Wanderers 3, Sunderland 3. League 2, Carlisle United 2, Bradford City 0. Colchester United against Rochdale postponed. Newport County 0, Salford City 2. Northampton Town 0, Crawley Town 1. Oldham Athletic against Sutton United postponed. Stevenage 3, Walsall 1. Tranmere Rovers 4, Scunthorpe United 0. Vanarama National League. Aldershot Town 1, Maidenhead United 1. Barnet 1, Altrincham 1. Bromley 2, Solihull Moors 1. Dover Athletic against Notts County postponed. FC Halifax Town 4, Eastleigh 0. Kings Lynn Town against Woking postponed. Torquay United 2, Dagenham and Redbridge 2. Weymouth 0, Southend United 1. Cinch Scottish Championship. Air United 1, Arbroath 0. Hamilton Academical 2, Partick Thistle 2. Inverness Caledonian Thistle 1, Wraith Rovers 1. Greenock Morton 5, Dunfermline Athletic 0. Queen of the South 0, Kilmarnock 2. Scottish League 1. Airdrionians 3, East Fife 0. Clyde 0, Cove Rangers 1. Falkirk 6, Dumbarton 2. Montrose 1, Alloa Athletic 1. Queen's Park against Peterhead postponed. Scottish League 2, Albion Rovers 1, Stenhouse Muir 2. Cowdenbeath 1, Annan Athletic 3. Forfar Athletic 3, Stranraer 2. And finally, Sterling Albion 0, Kelty Hearts 3. Let's go around the games that are in extra time, first of all, and then we'll go to St James's Park, where Cambridge have knocked Newcastle out. Uh, Maz Faruqi at West Brom. Yeah, it's now Brighton 2, West Brom 1. Ten-man West Brom Rom being beaten here at the Hawthorns. Brighton dominating the possession now. Now they have the goal and the man advantage. Neil Mopay finally finding a way through the West Brom defence in this first period of extra time. West Brom held on to their 1-0 lead for 10 minutes in the second half after Cedric Kipri was sent off, but Jakob Moda equalised to force us into this extra time. And now Brighton look the more likely to extend their advantage. West Brom look weary and out of ideas. They've been made very made to work very hard for it, but Brighton have a 2-1 lead here uh, as we head into half time in this period of extra time game of the day score wise has actually come at Oakwell Adam Cottier just amazing Barnsley 4 Barrow 4 we are 8 minutes into extra time and now there's a chance for Barnsley but Barrow have got enough numbers back to block off the opportunity really courageous effort from Barrow who were 2-0 down at half time they went behind 3-2 and then 4-3 and then Josh Kay made it 4-3 at the end of the game there were 5 goals in the last 12 minutes what next? 4-4. Four, four. Uh, thank you very much. Still QPR nil. Rotherham won as well in the other cup tie that's gone to extra time. Straight to St James's Park. Cambridge's winning manager Mark Bonner live on Sports Report with Juliet Farrington. 
Mark, just sum it up. It took you an age and the players to get off this pitch. They're still out now. The fans are still here, although they are starting to leave. Yeah, I mean, rightly so as well. What an occasion for the, for the supporters and for the players. And to soak that up, I think they deserve that because it's a memory that you can keep and share with each other. And, you know, we got promoted last year in a season where we didn't play in front of anyone. So we didn't get to celebrate too often with the supporters. So to be able to do it today from both sides is a, is a great thing and a huge achievement for us today. Well, that's just it. 5,000 of your fans, but in a stadium of 52,000 people. Yeah, look, an incredibly incredible football club. The spirit of the city, even the supporters and people I've spoken to said how welcome they were into the, into the city. And I think they've had a wonderful day out. So I hope ours have really enjoyed it and, and conducted themselves well and, and been welcomed into the city well. And, yeah, look, a, a ma massive atmosphere. And we, we had to cope with that in the early stages and in per periods of the game when the noise really got big. But <clears throat> this year, as the games have got bigger and the atmosphere has got bigger, we've got better, and that's continued today. So we're delighted. But when you say cope with the noise, you certainly quieten them down, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing you've got to try and do, isn't it? We managed to do it. We, um, we got periods of control look you have to ride your luck a little bit you have to make sure you have incredible performances in there our goalkeeper was outstanding today our defensive resolution was outstanding as well so look to get a clean sheet here with the team they put out is a is a massive result for us and last question finally because i know you've got to go off to do more interviews but joe just alongside you here joe ironside i mean he said he's still applauding the fans now he said he dreamt about scoring last night yeah i mean and he, he did he, he deserves it as well he's top man he's, he's done great for us and uh, one of many that put themselves through the ring for us so delighted with um, his performance with our performance and for the football club you know it's a huge result and it puts us on a, a great stage and the players have um, the players have stepped up so really proud of them good luck in the fourth round thanks for joining us thanks a lot thanks. take care bye -bye. good stuff Mark Bonner live with Juliet Farrington Jonathan Woodgate and Ian Dennis watch this for us uh, this afternoon on Five Live Jonathan you made the point a few times in commentary just how well coached Cambridge were so it seems appropriate that we start with that off the back of Mark Bonner's interview He's done an unbelievable job. 36-year-old uh, English coach who's coached from all the way up from academy level all the way to a, a first-team coach to assistant manager, and he's done an unbelievable coaching job. I mean, I looked at the last minute when they put everyone in the box. I could see him saying, no, where's Houlihan? Stay up. So that mean another Newcastle defender had to go back and mark Houlihan. And that's the fine detail of coaching, chappers. Honestly, what a performance. And his players did him absolutely so proud out there. Uh, back to them in just a second. Ninth goal of the afternoon for Adam Cottier. Which way? Barnsley five, Barrow four. Carlton Morris left foot shot in the box after a shot from outside the area had deflected into his path. 5-4. I'll go back to Ian and, uh, and Jonathan. And Ian, Newcastle's chances really came in the first half. They were certainly nowhere near as threatening in the second half. No, they weren't. Then in the first half, I mean, uh, Mark Bonner mentioned Mitar, D Dimitar Mitov, their Bulgarian goalkeeper. I mean, he pulled off four saves in the first half, one from a blistering effort from Murphy that he touched onto the crossbar. But in the second half, they were so resolute in defence and so well drilled and they put their bodies on the line uh, that they protected him very, very well, although he did make another terrific flying save to keep out a Joel Linton header late on. But they were absolutely, to a man, they just worked their socks off. And bearing in mind they've been badly affected by COVID over the festive period, it was to an all-round display... Uh, and the fact that they were actually applauded off the field of play by some of the Newcastle supporters who'd stayed inside the ground is a measure of how well they actually played here today at St. Joe's. Because Newcastle, we said in commentary, didn't look like scoring. Newcastle despite were the fact awful, they were side. weren't yeah. they, Jonathan? I mean, that, you know, some of the players saying deserve, deserve abuse, but they're getting criticism and stick for their performance this afternoon, which is probably deserved. Yeah, I think so, yeah, especially since it's an FA Cup game against Cambridge, you're expected to win the game, but I'd rather, you'd rather concentrate on how well Cambridge mm. did and, and look at the pluses. I mean, the centre-forward, inside chappers, if you've seen him play today, he bullied them mm. centre-backs all over, and at the end of it, they start to drop Joe Linton back in front of him to help out. He was their man, he was their talisman, the spine of the team, if you go through it, inside May, Digby... Ockendina and Matov, it's, it's just a, a performance there it was outstanding all the way through the team. They covered every blade of grass. Wes Houlihan came on. You should have seen him sprinting back box to box. I mean, the performance they put in was absolutely fantastic. It was a joy to watch, to be honest with you. Ian, Jonathan, thank you very much. As things stand, we have two non-league sides into the fourth round. There may be more, depending on what Yeovil do at home to Bournemouth or what Chesterfield do at Chelsea uh, later this evening. But one of the 
two teams definitely through. Boreham Wood, they beat AFC Wimbledon, watched by John Southall. They did. It is all quiet inside here now. What a contrast to what it was like about 20 minutes ago. An absolutely wonderful afternoon for Boreham Wood, for their fans and for their chairman, Danny Hunter, who has sacrificed much for this club, including remortgaging his house back in 2020. They thoroughly deserved it. Two shots on target, two goals, and that is all you need. Terrific performance from every single player. One up at half-time, a wonder strike from Tyrone Marsh into the right corner. Absolutely thumped it in. Worth watching that later. The second, four minutes from time, Adrian Clifton honours a substitute, the Montserrat International, with his first touch pretty much. He guided the ball into the right-hand corner. Absolute bedlam inside Meadow Park. Ab- terrific stuff. You also have to say Wimbledon, very poor this afternoon, but don't take anything away from Boreham Wood. Fourth in the National League to Wimbledon's 18th in League One, 34 places between the two. And for the first time in their history, they are in round four of the FA Cup. Let's hear from their manager, Luke Garrard, who's speaking with Sahil Sahi. You made history for Boreham Wood. How are you feeling? Yeah, listen, top of the world. I've got to be honest with you, it hasn't sunk in yet. Um, full credit to the squad. We've had a good week this week. We prepped them. We went and done our due diligence in terms of their shapes, their personnel, and the boys implemented it superbly. And yeah, they threw everything at it. We're good. We're good defensively. We're um, we're really organised. We're really, really well drilled. They put balls in the box. It's our strength. We've got Dave Stevens, Jammer, and Will, Will Evans that are combined height of 21 foot. So yeah, we we don't mind balls coming in the box. We get good first contacts. But for me, I feel I feel for them because they've come here. It's a proper FA Cup tie. The wind, the rain, everything that played a part. Um, I thought it was contested superbly. It's just a shame that they've gone away and lost. And the fourth round, what are you looking at tomorrow afternoon? Who are you hoping for? I thought it was Monday evening. Um, I don't really care. I've got to be honest with you. Wollstone comes to town on Tuesday. <laughs> I know it sounds really, really cliche, but as a manager, you can't switch off. As much as I want to enjoy the, the prep, the planning, the organisational side of things, we've got a midweek against Wollstone. That's our bread and butter. And we need to ensure that we, yeah, put a performance on against them on Tuesday. Obviously, we'll have, I'll have one eye on the draw. But for me, it's about, yeah, enjoying tonight, enjoying the moment, and it's back to work tomorrow. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Luke Garrard, the Boreham Wood manager with Sahel Sahi. So the other non-league side through, and they're lower ranked than Boreham Wood as well. They're in the National League North at Kidderminster, and they came from behind to knock out championship side Reading, John Murray. Yes, another great day in the great competition for Kidderminster Harriers, playing in the sixth tier, currently fifth in the National League North, knocking out a Reading team that was inexperienced, have a relegational struggle on their hands in the Championship, picked up more injuries today and looked to have a world of problems. Mind you, they actually led 1-0 at half-time, George Puskas thrashing in a volley just before the break. But Agbra is a special place in the FA Cup and the class of 2022 turned it around. The captain, Sam Austin, forced a shot in past goalkeeper Raphael and the winner in the 82nd minute came from a scramble of scrambles in the six-yard box. Centre forward Amari Morgan-Smith emerged with the credit and not even over a quarter of an hour of added time could deny Kidderminster Harriers who have done it again in the FA Cup and the scenes of celebration are carrying on even now. Uh, Alan Hutton was uh, was alongside John. Look, I don't want to poo-poo this at all or dampen it, but I, I have no idea, Alan, how the officials decided that ball, <laughs> that ball was in for the winning goal. I mean, it was a typical lower league FA Cup scramble and, and bundle it over, wasn't it? Yeah, the scramble is the word. Look, it, was a, it was a great delivery into the six-yard box and it was just a stramash. Bodies everywhere, flying all over the place. We couldn't see it from where we were sitting. We just took a guess, but look, Great finish, got them in front, and well deserved uh, by the end up. Yes, I think it was the body language that told us it was over the line. Yeah, what we basically <laughs> done was we, we were watching out the players to see who had done the celebration, who ran to the crowd, who stayed there last, and it was Morgan Smith. So we just presumed he was a goal scorer. <laughs> I'm not sure too often, you, John, you want to be giving the goals based on body language. Well, I was like you. I mean, we've only seen it once. We've not seen a replay of it. It seemed an age before it actually was confirmed as being over the line. I think the celebrations, frankly, began long before it was actually confirmed. I've seen about 10 replays of it, and I'm I'm still not sure I can even see the ball. But maybe there's another one that I can see later. Great result for Kidderminster. They're into the fourth round. Uh, Another great game this afternoon in three o'clock. Lancashire Derby at the DW Stadium. Wigan against Blackburn. 
this to and fro Katie Smith. <laughs> it certainly did. It finished 3 2, Mark, but I thought it was quite interesting before the game how the two sides were going to go into it, considering, of course, they're both right in the fight for automatic promotion in their respective leagues, and both had made a number of changes. And the first half sort of played out that way Blackburn on top, plenty of chances. It just seemed a matter of time, which it kind of was, because then Kadra put them ahead 49 minutes in. But Wigan, I mean, very much to their credit, seemed to wake up a bit at that point. They came from behind, a pelter from Max right. Power, and then a scrappy one from Watmore. And then it looked destined to go to extra time because Ayala uh, equalised for Blackburn in the 88th minute. Not long before that, though, stepped up 19-year-old Thelo Asgard. He'd just come on, and his curling winner was an absolute beauty. You should go and watch it. Almost one of those slow-motion shots spiralling into the top right-hand corner. So for Wigan, I mean, this is not just FA Cup fourth round. That's 14 games unbeaten now across all competitions. And, of course, it ends Blackburn's nine-game undefeated run. Remember, nine years ago, Wigan won the Cup for the first and only time. Another bit of magic here today. Such a great afternoon here at the DW. Ended 3-2. Another championship side to go out just like Blackburn would Blackpool. And they were in front at League 2 Hartlepool, but uh, the uh, home side came back to win 2-1 and their boss is Graham Lee. A lot of it's about us and how we apply ourselves. It doesn't matter who you're playing against, if we're organised enough and we can, we've got energy on the pitch and brave enough to not just brave out possession but brave in, in possession of the ball, we can, we can cause teams problems. And we got our goals and we put them on the back foot. You could say we put them on the back foot and, and that's a championship team. So we've got, to, we've got to take from that. But with all the smiles and celebrations, calm down that I went back at them and just said, look, when we go into league games, we have to be the same. And I expect nothing less than what I've just seen in that second half. We have to be at it. We have to be do the right things and we have to move the ball and be confident enough to do that, even with the pressures of the league. Because if we do that, I said, we'll climb the table. First time that the club are through to the fourth round draw for 13 years. Um, I mean, how does that feel, and who do you want next? <laughs> it feels fantastic. I'm, look, we're on a, all on a high this week, and we'll all enjoy it. The players, the club, the uh, fans, every one of us. These cup games are fantastic and uh, unbelievable for us all to enjoy, and long may it continue. Middlesbrough, I keep saying, it's my, it's my hometown club, so I would love that challenge of going up against them and that feeling of going up against them. But look, there's, there's some massive clubs in this competition and it's just an exciting time for us all to watch that draw and see what happens. Graham Lee, the Hartlepool manager there after they knocked out Blackpool. Uh, another shot came at Turf Moor where Huddersfield of the Championship knocked out Premier League side Burnley. The games that are in extra time at the moment, while well, Brighton still lead West Brom by two goals to one. Still Barnsley five, Barrow four, but there has been a second goal of the afternoon now at QPR, Aaron Paul. Oh, Mark Rotherham are fuming with Michael Salisbury, the referee. It is QPR one, Rotherham one. Five minutes to go in extra time. QPR have managed to find an equaliser through Lyndon Dykes. Now what's happened is, is Albert Adoma has played the ball in. It's looped in towards the back post. Lyndon Dykes was there. He got up high. He planted a header. It ricocheted off the post onto Josh Vickers, back onto the post. And it looked like it went behind the line. The ball has ricocheted out of the goal. Lyndon Dykes has picked it up and gone away celebrating. The referee hasn't blown for a goal. But then he's just faffed around for a bit. The crowd are cheering. They're playing the goal music. He's looked at his watch and gone, yeah, go on then, we'll give you a goal. <laughs> Five minutes to go. QPR won. Rotherham won. Finally, we have some action here. I remember there are penalties. If it's all square after extra time, everything settled on the day uh, in the FA Cup third round this year so there are four games about to take place three at 5.30 one at 5.45 let's start at Stamford Bridge shall we Chelsea against Chesterfield the National League leaders John Hunt yeah and the majority of the 6,000 travelling Chesterfield fans will surely believe there is more chance of the famous spire straightening than beating the eight time cup winners and European champions but how they're enjoying the day until perhaps they saw the team sheet just four uh, who started against Spurs line up tonight for Chelsea but they uh, include Pulisic, Werner, Kovacic and Romelu Lukaku sounds as though they're really going for it Chelsea and if Chesterfield are to cause a huge shock leading goal scorer Kabongo Shimanga will need to be at his very sharpest let's go to Swansea Southampton next Lee Blakeman yes yeah, Southampton's first game since the takeover of the club was completed this week and it's going to be played behind closed doors here at the Liberty due to the Covid restrictions still in place here in South Wales Southampton come into it having won just one of their last eight which was at West Ham on Boxing Day while Swansea haven't played for almost a month not since they
they lost 4-1 here to Nottingham Forest on the 11th of December. Southampton, last season's semi-finalists, have made five changes from their one-all draw with Spurs 11 days ago. Nathan Redmond amongst those coming in to start. Birmingham Plymouth is also a 5.30 this afternoon. Then at 5.45, it's Yeovil against Bournemouth. And fresh from his losing appearance on Fighting Talk <laughs> earlier, here's Alistair Bruce. Yeah, Ball. no cup upset there. Tucked away in the rolling Somerset countryside this evening. Seen as some famous cup upsets, of course, on the once sloping pitch in the years gone by. This would certainly count as another one of those for Yeovil. 82 places between them and their opponents this evening. The Bournemouth boss, Scott Parker, has made 10 changes, though. A lot of the regulars like Gary Cahill, Ryan Christie, Dominic Solanke all left at home. That should give Yeovil and their noisy supporters some real encouragement. And with what's gone on in the FA Cup so far today, you just never know. Uh, no, you don't. On to our next live commentary then. Our third of the day, a championship against Premier League. This one, Hull at home to Everton with Rob Green and Conor McNamara. Thanks very much, Mark. We are just about to get underway. The players, most of them, are taking a knee. And Everton in their blue strip will get us started playing from left to right as we look down here. This is the now-named MKM Stadium in Hull. This is the 5.30 kickoff, Five Live and BBC Sounds. You can watch this game too on BBC One right now. But Everton, who have become one of the crisis clubs in the Premier League, there is a banner in amongst the Everton fans already, and the game has only just kicked off. It says, Rafa Benitez, get out of our club. That's before a ball has been kicked, and it sort of sums up the mood from the visiting fans. One win in 12 for Everton. It is unthinkable for them to go out of the FA Cup in the third round here. And that is why Rafa Benitez is named pretty much as strong a team as he can do. We'll give you the full rundown in a moment, but Hull have got the first attacking set piece of the game. And he's played in by Honeyman, and it's into the net! start from an Everton kickoff 45 seconds they lose the ball the first bit of pressure lose the ball give away a free kick the ball comes in unchallenged 10 yards out brilliant header a wonderful start for Hull awful for Rafa Benitez and Everton 24 league places between them I'm not sure how many Everton players had even touched the ball there it might only be two or three Everton players had touched the ball the free kick Played in by George Honeyman, the former Sunderland player. And Tyler Smith, who hasn't scored at all all season, makes Rafa Benitez's day starts as difficult as I'm sure he could have imagined it to. You start, as a Premier League player, you start and say, the first 15 minutes will dictate this game. If we start well, we can coast this for the last hour. They've well, made it as hard as possible for themselves already. 